There we go, FT taking over Jupiter, Florida today. I just want to go right into that combo. No, AJ, you, you take it away with Matt Carpenter. Whatever you guys were talking about right up to the top of the show is what I want to hear. So go ahead, dude. How you well, doing? we were talking TCU football, and he's always like, I'm Mr. TCU. I have a house right next to the stadium. And I'm like, I was at Georgia game. And he uh, said, oh, why you bring that one up? And then I said, I went to a game this year. I went to the Colorado TCU game. I mean, oh. two worst games ever to talk about. That's the ones he wants to talk about. It, it kind of felt like a – it kind of felt like a little bit of a shot. It wasn't necessarily asking me about TCU. It was just kind of like rubbing in. Trolling. We've had. Trolling. Yeah, a little bit trolling. A little bit of trolling, trolling. But, hey, I'm used to it. I played with him. I got trolled a lot. <laughs> we, we deal with it every day. Wait, 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 wait. AJ was AJ was tough on you? <laughs> no. No. I wasn't allowed to be tough on him. He had, he had Matt Holiday and Adam Wainwright, like, behind him all the time. You know, he – so, like, he, I would try to get tough on him, and he'd be like, hey, boys – you take care of him. And I was like, oh, sorry, sorry. So yeah. I mean, he's being nice right now. I mean, it was good. It, AJ was a good veteran. Let's see. Well, I'll put it at that. Enough oh, love that's... And, enough, and enough and enough. What's the opposite of love? Hate? Enough hate. Tough love. love. Tough love. Mm -hmm. Tough love. There you go. That's perfect. Does it feel weird to be back, Matt? You know, it doesn't. Um, it really, like, if anything, it feels normal. What's felt weird was, you know, spring training's not in Jupiter, Florida. I've, I've had way more here than I've had any other place. Um, in 2022, my first year not in St. Louis, going to camp with the Rangers, that felt weird. Um, last year in San Diego, first camp, you know, with them, that th those felt weird. And, and not weird in a bad way, just different. You know, you don't, the, I think the hardest thing about a spring training for a guy at a new place is getting to know where to go. Like when someone says field six and you're like, I have no idea where field six is or, you know, <laughs> hey, where's the I'll, first day of uh, first day of my first camp with uh, the Rangers. I was I ate breakfast for the first hour in a room and I was looking around. I was like, man, I don't recognize any of these guys. Am I really that old? And then I realized I was on the minor league side. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Wait, That's what real. happened in Texas. That, that <laughs> literally happened. You thought the big league spread was brutal that year. That's what I said. Rangers. I was like, wow, the coffee down here. The coffee in Texas is not very good. I don't know what's going on. I was on the wrong side of the clubhouse. That's great. That's real. AJ, you don't know about that. You don't know about going to new teams. You only went to like I was three only or four. Seven. I was only on seven teams. I don't know anything about yeah, going to new teams. That doesn't count. Every time you re -sign with the White Sox, doesn't count as a new team. Well, well, I mean, I listen, I got my three months, four months in St. Louis. I had a great time. It's, listen. St. Louis was an organization was unbelievable, and Carp was there with me. Obviously, you know Holiday, Wayne, Ryan. We had some, we had some pretty decent players. Yachty. And if it wasn't for my new teammate Brandon Crawford and the Giants, we'd probably have a ring on our team. True, true. By the way, we, so we had Brandon. Crawford. No, you would have lost. <laughs> oh, you. Well, <laughs> come on. To you guys. To no the chance. Royals. We would 100% no beaten you guys. You guys Dude, were the Royals not in good. 14. Dude, not Dude, in the 14. Royals didn't get me out of my we home career. They never would have got me out. Our fourteen. Our fourteen. I'm telling you, the 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 team in the national. Whoever won that series between us and the Giants was winning the World Series that year. No, no doubt about it. No, you were you were, you were not even on the team. I was not playing. There's a big difference. <laughs> I never played. My teammates. I had full confidence in my teammates and Salvi to figure it out. No way. We would have just. We would have thrown our starters for one inning, and then we would have gone to the bullpen. And Ned Yost would have pooped his pants. He wouldn't have known what was going on. And somehow we would have beaten you in game seven. That's how it would happen. <laughs> okay. Well, we see it a different way. Yeah, we, we just we agree to disagree. Okay. When in Rome. When in Rome. Hey, Matt, <laughs> right. take me through what the clubhouse is like now because we'll have Nolan on later. And he mentioned how it's great to have someone like you back because this team's gone through a lot of turnover with legends leaving. Yeah, you know, I mean, look. I don't, I don't think uh, it's no uh, secret. Last year was tough on a lot of guys here. Um, you know, just, you know, I, honestly, it's a testament to this organization, their ability to put a consistent winning product on the field. And, you know, for whatever reason, last year it just didn't go as planned. And um, it was hard on a lot of guys. And, you know, I, 
I look, I, I want to make it, and I've said this, you know, very clear, like I, by no means am I some, you know, savior that's been brought in to help like fix leadership issues or, you know, something's going on in the clubhouse. It's just not the case. Um, more than anything, I'm just a guy who's experienced a lot in the game. I've experienced a lot um, in this uniform. And, you know, I'm here to, you know, one, I'm, you know, obviously, um, you know, show some of these young guys, you know, what it's like to be a Cardinal, um, how to be a professional and obviously, you know, win ball games, but also, you know, still, still, uh, you know, when I get my name called, be ready to compete and hopefully compete at a high level and, um, you know, bring some kind of value on the field as well. But the clubhouse feel has been great. The camp has been off to a really good start. We got a great group, a great balance of, of, of young guys and, and older players. And, um, I mean, just the unity is really coming together. Uh, you know, Carl and I were talking the other day. I mean, you know, he's he's obviously, you know, got a lot of rings over there in San Francisco. And I've been fortunate enough here to, you know, play on some really good teams. And um, we see a lot of similarities just in the cohesion of this group. And, uh, you know, we're fired up for this year. Can that success in St. Louis be contributed more to, not to joke about the Cardinal way, but the Cardinal way or – the fact that you had Yadier Molina and Adam Wainwright through that time and Chris Carpenter through that time, and now you don't have those guys. Well, I mean, I think that those guys obviously did a great job. Um, you know, they're the fabric of, uh, you know, what this organization's always stood for. But you got to remember, those guys were taught by former Cardinals. You know, Yadi came up through this organization and, and had – unbelievable mentors, players and coaches all the way through the system. And I don't think, you know, it would, it would not be, you'd not be able to give the credit that needs to be, that needs to be due to the guys, um, you know, that helped get him to where he is. And you could say that about, you know, every guy that's come up through the system, um, you know, it's a special place that, uh, that really promotes that, uh, the day you sign. I mean, I think back to my time when I first got into the Cardinals organization, every, every level I hit, I, I made the statement, and this is the best staff I've, you know, best coaches I've ever been with. Then I'd get promoted and it'd be a little bit better and all the way up into the, you know, the major league level. So, you know, it, it starts early here and, um, you know, obviously those are big key pieces that we're going to miss, but, you know, the challenge will be who in that room now is going to step, step up and become that next core group. Okay, so do you still have your Cardinals handbook from when you were drafted? I bet I could find it, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. When I came over, they didn't give me one. They, 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 well, they refused. You probably, would you have accepted it? I would have accepted it, and then I would have put it on the Internet for all to see. Uh, of course he would have. <laughs> of course he would have. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, so you were talking about your leadership and obviously that whole thing. So we had Brandon Crawford on yesterday, and, he, and I asked him about – the leadership and obviously Nolan and himself being brought in. And then he kept mentioning you as a leader. And I said, you have to tell him from me, there's no way he can be a leader after the skits I saw you pull when I played with you. I'm like, how do you go from what you were to now you're the leader? Is it because of the mustache you grew in New York? Well, think about it. What was this? 2014. So it's that 10 was years year, ago. year three for me, maybe yeah. year two. A lot's happened. I think, uh, I think, well, you, what happened? I'll, I'll say this outside of baseball, I think the biggest thing that changed for me was having kids and mm. having a family, having someone else you're responsible for. I think when you're a young player in this game, you're so focused on, you know, what you got going on right in front of you. You think your world is the most important thing. And I mean, as you get older, you realize that, that that's just not the case. It starts with, you know, Mary, now you're responsible for, you know, the livelihood of someone else. And then you add a kid to that element or a couple of them. You grow up pretty quickly, so uh, I, I would give a lot of credit uh, to that. But also, just you know, the fail. I mean, at the, I, I, when we played together in '14, I mean, I really hadn't struggled at the big league level. No, you were really good. Then. <laughs> I had to, I, as much as I hate to admit it, you were really good. I I've gone through struggles, and with adversity, um, you learn a lot of le lessons. This game is you know a hard game, and I've had a lot of challenges. I mean, in, you know, I mean, I, after 10 years in the big leagues, I went to the minor leagues, AAA, in '22, and spent a significant amount of time there, not because um, I necessarily wanted to. It was because at that time, that's where my offers were. And so, I mean, you learn a lot through the hardships and experiences in this game. And, and that's really, I think, I, that more than anything, being able to, 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 to sit down with a young player and explain to him, look, man, I've seen both sides of this. I've been a good player in this league. I've been a bad player in this league. I've been in the minor leagues. Um, you know, so hopefully I can speak some something um, 
you know, into those guys. All right, so who's better? You, Ethan Holiday, Jackson Holiday. Let me tell you Matt something. Holiday. Well, let me just <laughs> that's an easy answer. The question I'm last on that list. Okay. Matt is obviously the he's number one. I was by the way, I mean, not to bring up a hot hot I mean, were you shocked that it was like right off the ballot? I mean, I was offended. That that he was right off the bat. Yeah. That's tragic. I mean, I, That's tragic. I, I need to look into I, it. I watch. I listen. I listen. Hey, listen. I listen to you guys. I watch the show. I hear some of the stuff y'all were talking about, and uh, so I was surprised that he was right off the bat. This was a really good player for a really long time. Um, so he's first. Um, I would have to put Jackson. Jackson is second. Um, Ethan's right there with him, and then I'm down there at the bottom. I'll tell you, there's something more disheartening than showing up to get work in. And having a 16, 17 year old kid out hit you, and uh, <laughs> that's what happens there. And you know, if there was, if I was a betting man of an American League Rookie of the Year, I, I think Jackson's my pick. I like it. All right. So last thing before we let you go, because your boss is sitting over there waiting. You're making Mosellock wait. So. Oh, is he next? Yeah. Okay. So we got to get you off go here then. before you change his mind. Um, you do grounding. Do you take your shoes off? Do you do that every park you go to, every place you go? I try to, but not, I wouldn't say all of them. But I, I. I do try it, but what I try to do it, it every day. What does it do for you? I think more than anything, it just makes me feel, well, let, let me back up. I started in New York, living in a high rise, living in downtown New York. I'm an outdoor type of guy. Uh, I live on a ranch back in Texas. Do you have like zebras and stuff? No zebras, but I've got some livestock out there. And so I'm used to that kind of thing. And I just felt really like I was missing that. And it just started with taking off my shoes, walking on the grass in the outfield had a mustache at the time, started hitting homers. It became a way bigger thing than maybe it, maybe it, you know, is. And, uh, but yeah, I still do it. Um, you know, maybe you should grow the mustache back, ground yourself and hit homers. That'd be good. I'll do anything for that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it results in homers and wins, I'll do whatever it takes. Uh, hey, I, I've been told I have uh, time for one more because, uh, Mazalak walked away because probably AJ pissed him off for a sec, but he'll be back. Um, Dave wants to know, Carp, if you've ever thought about the future, like maybe managing or coaching or what you'd want to do one day. What? AJ? He's, you're, he's scoffing. So rude. He's laughing. What a, I mean, I guess if Descalso is doing it, you can do it. Hey, listen, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. You know, I I, I, uh, I really haven't thought too much about it. I mean, I love baseball. I love the game. I'd certainly like to – I'd certainly welcome the idea of, of uh, getting back in some, you know, shape or form. But – I haven't thought too much about it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll come on this show with you guys. I actually think you'd be a good coach. I appreciate that. I really do. You've been through it. You've been through the ups and downs. You've been through the battles. You've, you know, you had to go back to the minor leagues. You've experienced the highs and lows. I think you'd actually be a really good coach. So that's my compliment for the year. That's the nicest thing he's ever said to me. <laughs> that's the nicest thing we've ever heard him say <laughs> on air. He says nice stuff off air, but he's got this persona. He plays the heel in WWE. So, you know, he's... He's got to keep that persona. So we'll, we'll, for we'll sure. I'm all, hey, listen, he likes to play the villain, but he's got a big heart. I see right through it. That's right. Yep. Yeah, he does. Big old teddy bear. Of course, he says, I'll come on the show more. And then AJ's like, actually, you should do coaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my show. That's exactly right. I'm That's glad exactly you That's exactly why I said what I said. Oh, Matt, good to see you, dude. Uh, welcome back to Cards Camp. And yes, please come on a few times during the season. We'd love to have you on, dude. I appreciate it, guys. You guys are doing a good job. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Matt Carpenter with us. Uh, St. Louis Cardinals camp today. As you can see, we start off hot and then we will get to John Mazalak, who's run the front office there in St. Louis for a long time. Other expected guests. We'll do the best we can because we're usually a two-hour show. Eventually, I think they're going to play a game, although it doesn't look great out there. It looks very Florida out there. It That's does look sure. very Florida, but very Florida also means that it could look like the world's ending, <laughs> and then it could look like the world's beginning. We're so, trying up. There's a window. You're playing in Florida. Yeah, we'll, we'll be okay. I have a feeling they're going to play ball, but Nolan Arenado is on the guest list. Lars Newtbar, international sensation, is on the guest list. Sonny Gray is on the guest list. Lance Lynn, obviously. This is, is what happens when list. AJ comes to see your team. If you want you if you want your guys to come and talk on FT, just have AJ mm -hmm. PJ to your Arizona your Arizona camp because he gets players. I can only imagine what he does when he walks into the clubhouse. Oh my gosh. Look, he's already got food from the equipment guy. He's already got 
he's drinking the team's drinks and stuff like that. Like Lance Lynn's keys. To yeah, the he pink took a Bronco. picture with the big Bronco. We'll show that later. I imagine he goes up to certain dudes and he's like, "What? You scared to go on the show?" No, see, <laughs> no, see, he, he's not on camera, so he's like, "Oh, hey." Good to see you. Why don't you come on the show for a little bit? This will be nice. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, he's like, <laughs> kidney shot. Nerd. Can't coach Nerd. for his life. <laughs> you call yourself a leader? Um, but anyway, we're excited to talk to all the players that I just mentioned. And yes, we'll do our best, as, as we did here with Carp, to mix in a couple of the questions from the FT fam, as usual. And then we'll get into some hot topics a little bit later on when we get some breaks. But we are good to go. So let's go back out to Jupiter, Florida, and let's bring in our next guest, who unfortunately had to listen to a few minutes of the last interview. But here he is, John Mazalak, running the front office for the Cardinals for a long time with us. Mo, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Do you, do you remember this guy? You bring in your good memories or bad memories or a little bit of both? Uh, very good memories from him. Happy to see he's thriving in his post-career doing this show well otherwise i'd be beating down your door for a job i want to be like uh that's right Ryan Ludwig i appreciate it or, or one Jason of the other guys, yeah. yeah that are you know special assistants to the president mm -hmm. you, you you were you trying to ruin the 2014 team by bringing him in is that what you were is that what you were going for <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures yeah, you guys, you had enough good, good, good guys in the locker room. I mean, every single dude from that team that I met is unbelievable. Like, just, just love the Lord. You know, you're going, out, you're going out buying stuff for people, and then you bring AJ in, and they're all like, oh, "Is this what Mo's doing to us?" It's kind of funny. Like, I don't recall that, but I, I certainly remember like people were kind of questioning, like, would he fit in? But it ended up working out just fine. I mean, I mean, Kratz is just mad because we just had Carp on. And we're like, if we just could have beaten Brandon Crawford and the Giants, then we would have beat the shit out of the Royals in the World Series and we'd have a ring. And I definitely would have a job at the Cardinals. Not yeah, like I look back, uh, Giants kind of upset us a couple times. So that was a, kind of yeah. a bummer in our history. So was that a tough signing then for you, Brandon Crawford, being that he did also cause some heartbreak in the past? Not really. I, you know, I always admired him as a player. So given our situation right now, especially with our young shortstop, I thought he'd be like a great mentor and, and someone that, you know, he cer certainly understands his role, which is important. And um, I think he'll be really helpful to this club. What, what did you think of Mason Wynn's comments when he signed? We had Crawford on yesterday and he was like, oh, he's lighting a fire under me. Um, some people are like, oh, you're not motivated. It's like, nah, he He's 21. He, he wants to play and, and do his best. But do you feel like when he has someone like Brandon next to him now, he wants to hold himself in a certain way to, I don't know, I don't want to say impress a veteran like that, but you know what I'm saying? Where, where you kind of like change your attitude a little bit around someone that you respect in a different way? Well, maybe the easiest way to think about this is about 10 days ago, we're taking infield and there's, you know, three guys standing at third, three guys standing at second three guys standing at, at first, and then we had one guy at short. And now all of a sudden we add Crawford into the mix. Obviously it adds a depth piece to us, but more importantly, it's gonna be someone that can help teach and mentor somebody like Mason Wynn. And like, look, Wynn is a young guy. He certainly has confidence, um, really, really good player, but young and he's gonna to have to learn. And anybody that's been a part of this game understands that nothing comes easy. Um, you have to earn it and having somebody that's standing next to you or behind you that can help you grow, it's going to be important for him. Okay, Mo, so I love what you guys did this offseason. You went out, and I love this as, as an organization where you, you went out and you said, all right, we're targeting pitchers, right? We, we need three pitchers. So you went out and got Sonny, you went out and got Kyle Gibson, you went out and got Lance Lynn, like right away, okay? Whereas there's other teams that sit back and say, oh, what's going to fall to us? You were like, no. You said, all right, we targeted these three guys. You know, Lance has been here. You know what kind of guy? Kyle went to Missouri, and Sonny has a great reputation of being a great guy, right? So you guys were like, boom, these are our three. And then you were done with your pitching staff, right? And then you're like, you know, all right, we're going to add a Brandon Crawford. We're going to make some tweaks here and there. But this is what we need. And this, and as a player, I mean, and as a front office person, you have to be proud of that because, hey, we got the three guys we wanted, and then we can kind of sit back and watch everyone else kind of scramble. Yeah, so a couple of things. One is we knew going into the year we had to go find pitching. So 
there's a couple ways you can always approach it in the front office is you can wait and see how the market develops and then react, or you can try to jump the market and address your needs. And we tend to do that historically when we, when we know what we feel we have to go out and get. And then, you know, there were some other pieces we still felt we needed to add. Um, obviously, we made the trade for Kittredge. Mm-hmm. We, we signed Middleton. And so all of a sudden, you know, we feel like our bullpen has changed the dynamics as well. But, you know, I think trying to be aggressive in the off season usually ends up benefiting you because the uncertainty and the unknown of what can happen if you keep waiting and waiting is, is takes a lot of patience. Yeah. And uh, I think from a fan base standpoint, too, you want to at least put them at ease that you are trying and you're trying to improve. You forgot Carpenter, by the way, the biggest piece. You brought him <laughs> <Carpenter>. I'm sorry, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> well, he made you <laughs> wait. I understand why you would forget. I'm, I'm mad at him right now. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, he made me wait. Oh, that's right? true. That's true. I, I, I understand. <laughs> what was a focus for you? Because I heard we, we talked when I was in St. Louis at the McCarver thing a little bit about some stuff and not, nothing like, you know, in depth in the organization, but you, you know, you said, Hey, we need pitching. Everyone knew you needed pitching. But one of the things you saw all the time in St. Louis was you guys need more swing and miss stuff. You need more strikeouts. And I think you came out and even said that. So Kittredge, Middleton, those are swing and miss guys, right? Helsey throws 120 out of your back end, right? Now your starters necessarily aren't really more swing and miss, but the, the back end guys that you have now are, are definitely, even Hicks, who was throwing hundred. He gave up a lot of contact. So was that your focus in the bullpen? Hey, at the end of a game, we need swing and miss guys. Really, I just wanted flexibility in the bullpen. Um, You know, when you think about someone like Kittredge, who actually pitched in one through 11 innings. So he started a game, finished a game. Are you going openers this year? No, we're not. But the (laughs) thing that's sort of interesting, though, is just having the ability to to have someone that's not not tied to a role mentally. Um, And I think a lot of times in our organization, we tend to be – very distinct in how we use pitchers and when we use pitchers. So I think like in Middleton's case and in Kittred's case, they're like, hey, high leverage, put me in. Are you building this team in the offseason, the moves that AJ just talked about? Are you building it to win the division or win the World Series? Well, philosophy is you got to get to October before you can win October. So when you think about like building a club, You've got to be able to to win your division or get in as a wild card, or you have no chance. Um, I think historically we've always tried to do that model. It's been a while since we've been to the World Series. Um, certainly excited about the players we have on this team. Obviously, uh, we've already dealt with some injury issues early on. I think uh, you got to always remind yourself it's a 162 game season. Seasons are long, so you got to be patient. It's not necessarily what you look like on April one, but it's what you look like in the middle of the season and how you finish. So you mentioned, let's say you guys are, you get to July, when you guys are in the middle of it in your division, you have a chance to get to the postseason. There's payroll flexibility, right, to add a guy at a trade deadline to bring him in and possibly put you over the hump? I think so. Um, you know, blessed with a great owner, Bill DeWitt. True. Cares about the game. Um, he's always been very reactionary to our needs and, and very helpful when we need something. So, you know, depending on where we are, what we look like, um, if, uh, if an email or call needs to be made, uh, I'm certainly not afraid to do it. But, you know, again, I think we're just excited about where we are. Good vibe in this camp. I think bringing some of these uh, veteran players in with their experience and what they've been through has been really helpful. Based on all the moves you've made and talking about wanting to make win the division, I want to give you a hypothetical of let's say the MRI didn't come back on Sonny's hamstring the way it did come back and it looks like it's shorter would it if it were like a two or three month injury would you guys be in the snell money market so a couple things um i never comment on free agents because that's always a, a very he's not allowed Eric. Nope, nope, nope. that's my um, fault rookie mistake and number two <laughs> and number two like like it's always very dangerous to do hypothetical because you just never know and so you know my experience is you just don't talk about these things um, we got good news on Sunny, and so, you know, hopefully it's shorter rather than longer. Okay, last question before you have to go. It's a simple question, easy question for you to answer. You can answer this because the guy's not a free agent. When are we announcing the Goldschmidt extension? Goldie, I think uh, great teammate, great player, um, one of the most impressive guys we've ever been around. Um, <laughs> that, and, wasn't, that wasn't the question. Yeah. We so all know like, that about him. I think, like, like <laughs> you know, I, you know, we, we, we had a drink over the offseason. We talked about it. We both want to just see how things go. Okay. And then uh, at some point, we'll, we'll address it when needed. Okay. That's a great answer. That is the most GM, president of baseball operations answer I've ever heard in my life. 
They gave us a little insight, That's, though. They they met up and talked about it over the off season. I like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming Goldie yeah. drank milk. No, it was a bourbon. Oh, okay. All right. There you, you know, go. He has the, I like that. You know, when you look at him, you're like, man, this dude couldn't do anything but drink milk. Actually, know. it was a good bourbon. It was a Weller. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. If it's, he, if it's Goldie, he's going big. That's nice. Yeah. Well, well yeah. Mo, great to see you. Thanks for swinging by. And, yeah, hopefully uh, AJ stays strong in his new job. I think his questions are pretty good, right? <laughs> you guys were great. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate you, Mo. Good yeah. luck this season, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. John Mazalak. Uh, president of Baseball Ops, running the Cardinals for for a while now. Um, AJ was good there. He's 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 in his he's, he's in sharp. his element. He's 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 in his element. There's... He's different today. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I f- I feel it. I I don't want to. I want to like... know if it's the real AJ or if we sent a bot. Like, did we did we send a an AJ bot? He, he's got the former team a vibe. Giddy, yeah. Giddy, like like a little high school date kind of vibe. But like, no joke. Like, even just the Goldie part alone, like, okay, the transition was A+, plus, right? Taking us from the free agents to a guy on your team, asking about the extension. We get the conversation, or, you know, at least that we know there was a conversation in the offseason. Then the follow-up, like, hey, that's a GM answer. I mean, that, feeling it. to me, that's that's the stuff that I feel like I can actually analyze and comment on it's with experience, with the broadcast plus, experience. And I was like, so that was strong. So, by the way, uh, Ali Marmol is next up on the guest list, so he'll join us in a sec, too. And, yeah, Mo actually uh, yeah. hits the gym. Yeah. He hits the gym. He, he was wearing he that does. quarter zip. The quarter zip sleeveless with the with the short sleeve underneath. I don't know. I don't know if, I, if I'm making that much cash as a GM. He might be on the elliptical for – he might be on the elliptical during the, during the games. Well, they, they're on their phones – 24 7 now where they're talking to he said email too email he, he said possibly an email of a trade at the i would love to know if there was an entirely emailed trade ever he's been a gm since 2007 like yes there were cell phones but we didn't have the smartphone usage mm-hmm. like so he was picking up he was getting a, a line two hold uh line i wanted to get to you know, when they didn't re-sign Matt Holiday back in 2000. Oh, you wanted to start dipping back in time and going 17. over stories? Yeah, yeah, because he was he was a fixture there. He was a fixture and he was a guy. And I know that was tough for Matt and his family to not re-sign. And I know Mo, Mo really liked him. Everybody loved him in St. Louis. They just didn't see eye to eye? Didn't see eye to eye. I mean, that's when he ended up signing with the – it was between the Astros and the Yankees. They both offered the same amount that year. Shocker. But you know what's funny, and this is so me. The only thing I can remember was that Matt Holiday had a one-team no-trade clause. It's a true story. When he's with the Cardinals, I don't know. I think it was with the Yankees. I think it was later on in the career. But I mean, that's when we played together. A one-team no-trade clause. I think I think it had Oakland in there. You didn't want to play in the ballpark. <laughs> I'm like ninety-five percent sure because it was even something that I was able to talk about on MLB, and I don't think I got on in trouble for saying it, but it's true. One team. Can I just get a one team no trade clause? I'm trying to look it up. Uh, All right. While we have a second, let's get to a little charge the mound topic action and start with Brian Bayo extension talks. I feel weird talking about this when AJ is at Cardinals camp trying to We're cheating land our Bayo. next guest because this <laughs> is his dude. I mean, he won a lot of money off Brian Bayo in the beginning of the season. He was picking his K props and Bayo kept hitting. And then obviously, eventually, bet MGM adjusted and, and then, then I it started became more taking, of a race. Then I started taking the under. And that worked. He, kept, he, had like, he had like seven or eight starts in a row where he didn't go over four Ks. And I was like, I like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get on that because he's not a strikeout guy. He does strike batters out. But, yeah, Brian Bayo and Boston Red Sox are close to signing an at least five-year extension worth more than $50 million. Kind of vague numbers, but I like them. The deal will most likely be announced at the Dominican Series this weekend between the Red Sox and the Tampa Rays. And that coming from Jansen Pujols. has a huge following. Um believe he's a reporter um let's get Janssen on here talk about it we can but anyway thoughts on this I mean the Red Sox could use some good news and I'm always surprised that more teams don't 
take a page out of, say, the Braves playbook. Atlanta's been doing this for a long time. I know it's different with pitchers, but I was actually there the day that the deal became official between the Braves and Spencer Strider. And I was in the postseason. Imagine everything going through your brain as what? A rookie? Wasn't it at the end of his first season? Uh, or was it the end of his second season? It was the end, it was technically his second season because he came up and was oh, like, for a little bit. Yeah. yeah I, I think. But still, a baby in the bigs is my point. Okay. Yeah. And you're in the playoffs and you agree to an extension. I remember having a pretty long talk with Alex Anthopoulos about that because he's like, we mostly do this with position players, but he's like, I couldn't really find any reason why we shouldn't do this with this guy because I think he's a one. I think he might even be a top three or five pitcher in the bigs throughout the length of this contract. And he's like, and the only thing is injury risk, which can happen with anyone, especially with pitching. But getting him at a young age, the price looked right. And obviously, that's already a massive bargain for Atlanta. So I get it. You might miss more on a pitcher extension, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't explore them, especially at this price for Boston. We'll talk about it. Ali Mormel's coming on. Okay. This guy is Listo. He wants to get out there and manage his team. I'm ready. <laughs> Ali Marmol, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, ready to go with AJ. Uh, Ali, how you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? We're good. We're good. So how's Cam? You, wait, hold um, on. You forgot the most important part of Ali's resume. What? I mean, I'll let him say it. Where'd you go to high school? Dr. Phillips. <laughs> Harvard <laughs> of the South, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phillips, proud right here. Look at us. Harvard of the South. Does that mean you don't even need to go to college after Doc Phillips? You just do Doc Pretty Phillips, much. and you've got a degree. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, he actually did. Where's he? College of Charleston. I did. College of Charleston. College of Charleston. Yeah. yeah. So he mm -hmm. actually did Doc, go to college. Dr. Pepper High School. That's so awesome that you guys are now <laughs> together. So sweet. AJ is like it's like AJ's at prom right now. We were talking about it when we didn't have a guest on Ollie. AJ is so giddy today. He's like, He's got a little glow to I him. love it. It's really Florida weather here. It's so nice. Look at everybody. They know me. I've I worn that uni. I stole some of Ollie's drinks out of his fridge. I did. I, I, did. I didn't steal it. Uh, Mark <laughs> gave it to me. Also, the clubhouse guy. Just <laughs> delicious. Though. It is really good. Yeah. I don't, just once upon a coconut. Yeah. In case anyone wants one. <laughs> All right, I'll dive in with the hard hitting stuff. So, Ali, do you feel Can't like wait. do you feel like it could be easier this year for you to put a lineup together cuz maybe there's less, you know, battles, less competition. I mean that in a good way where you can just say, "Hey, I'm automatically putting so and so in this spot." Cuz I know, especially in the outfield yeah. last year, there was a lot, right? I know what you mean by that. Like it's good to have versatility, but it's also good to show up to the park knowing that you're going to be in the lineup, hitting in this spot, playing this position. So when you have the Donovans and the Eddies, and I mean, we had guys that could bounce all over the place. And um, as good as it is to have that as a manager, you also, and as a player, you want to know where you're going to play and the position you're going to play every day. So I think these guys coming in, knowing exactly that is going to be the key. Um, so competition is good, but we do have a pretty set lineup going into this year, which I think, we talked about our defense last year. I think guys will um, have more stability there because of that as well, man. What's well, nice, Jordan like, Walker? Oh, go ahead, AJ. No, I was gonna say it's nicer when you, as a manager, if you're Brian Snicker or you're, I mean, Dave Roberts a little bit. If you just write the same nine guys in every day, right? You show up to you show up to, to Bush Stadium and you're like, okay, I got this guy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're like, all right, I got to switch my catcher. Maybe or there's a lefty righty matchup. But when you have those same nine guys, that's it, it's ultimate. helpful. And you can give guys days off and say, all right, Golden needs a DH day, and you kind of plug and play. But um, it is nice from this seat and also the player seat to know exactly what to expect every day. And I think we'll have a lot more of that this year for sure. Yeah. How's Jordan Walker looking? Because I know, you know, for him last year, everyone was excited and then got sent down, came back up. And I think it's fair that we could make a case that maybe you could have just stayed up with the big league club based on some numbers. Hated huh? He, he hated, hated it. it. Oh gosh, he came. What did you send him down? Yeah, I remember that. I, uh, we had a we had an off the record conversation that I didn't tell anybody. So if you want to tell the <laughs> off the record stuff, go, go right ahead. <laughs> no, no, I think you you, you you did a good job of on the record. We'll leave the off the record. No, you explained it to me. Yeah, like we, I asked him straight up. I said, "Hey, why did Jordan Walker get sent down?" You explained it, and then I said it the way you allowed me to say it, which I totally understood. There were things that were said and I was like I get it because at the time we were like dude this guy's one of your best hitters you guys no are struggling offensively no so doubt. it didn't make sense but then when <clears throat> excuse me when you explained it to me and you and you explained it to us 
only us Dr. Philip Panther grads could understand, Crouch, you wouldn't get it. Uh, it made it so I understood it. And, and listen, it was in the long run, it was probably the best thing that happened to him, right? Because yeah. he went down, had to figure some stuff out, came back up and was a better player. Yeah, in the moment, it sucked. And even having to tell him that he was going down wasn't – wasn't. A, I didn't love it. Um, but if you're playing the long game, I think it was the right play. When you get to know Jordan and his personality and the things he was working on, I think it made the most sense to not ask him to do that at the highest stakes that he's ever played in. Um, but you asked me how he's looking right now. He's looking a lot better, man. He, he took it to heart. He spent the entire offseason down here in, in Jupiter working with Jose Okendo. Um and he, they were diligent, man. They they were working on all the deficiencies that he had. I mean, it's no secret that this is the area of his game that he wants to improve. And over the last several weeks, he's looked a lot better out there. At the end of the day, I think you're just seeing a much calmer version of him, which is going to lead to more success. Um, so just nerves-wise, I think we're in a better spot. You've been in this org for a long time. Yadier Molina is somebody I bring up all the time, whether people yeah. think he's a Hall of Famer, French Hall of Famer, all that stuff. Was the Cardinals organization, coaching staff, front office, you know, analytic, everybody, were they prepared for the void that Yadier Molina left when he was when he was done? Even though he took a whole year, everybody knew he was leaving. Were you guys prepared? Prepared, yes, but I, I don't think you can account for the entirety of it, right? Like when you think about having the same guy behind the plate for two decades, um, you try to account for what that's going to look like, but it, it, it is difficult um, when you're making that transition. And I, I'm going to be completely honest. Wilson did a phenomenal job. And I mean, I mean an absolute masterclass on being selfless and, and putting the team before himself, because there were some struggles last year and in, in media wise, and he handled it extremely well. We, we've been able to kind of talk through that at, at length this off season. And, um, but yeah, there, there is a void of that presence. And I think when you listen to some of the comments that our players have made over the off season, there's just, we, we were wanting more experience in that clubhouse and um, we have it. So um, were we prepared? Yes, but you can't account for all of it. Did you know that Wilson Contreras, and I don't think, and I just found this out today, won the press good guy award for like being accountable for what he yeah. went through last year. Yeah. And then he, you know, they gave him an award. That's awesome. Yeah. I Cause I can't it. imagine. Yeah. That's like cool. you know you played i played like i can't imagine what he went through and then still being accountable still being a good guy still showing up every day and it i mean i'm sure it bothered him inside as you it did but he never really let it openly bother and no that, man listen, dude i tip my cap because i would have been fighting everybody and that's why i said he taught a master class on being <laughs> selfless because behind closed doors this guy like he truly cares about the team and he could have easily got sideways been very vocal about it and uh, he, he never did. He, uh, if you look at his second half, he had a tremendous second half on, on both sides of it. He was improving on the framing. He was doing a better job behind the plate. He was hitting the ball all over the park. So this is a guy that, I mean, I, I tip my cap for sure. I have one serious question and then one funny one. But my serious question yeah. is, do you talk to these guys in the clubhouse and say, we're going to win the World Series? Um, yeah, I, I do. And day one, you definitely lay that out. And I think there's a lot of teams that, that do that, but it's it's following through on how we're going to do it more than anything. Like you can say it, but it's, it's also you start talking about what it takes to do that. And we're in a low stake environment right now. It's spring training. Um, it's easy to talk about that. But when, when they turn the heat up and we go through a stretch that's not very good, how are we going to stay together as a club? What's that going to look like? Those are the things that I think are more meaningful than just saying, hey, we're going to win a World Series. It's uh, – what it, does it look like when we're in the middle of the season, towards the end of the season, and we're several games back, and we have to come together and, and make a push? So we talk more about that than anything. And you got a lot of good veterans in there that know what that yeah. actually means. It's not just it's not just hollow hollow talk. It actually means something. All right, now the funny one: Are you glad that Goldie did what he did yesterday in the game? Like, did you guys think you were not going to get a single home run all of spring training? <laughs> Dude, the entire staff had their hands up when he hit it. It was we can stop answering questions about it. Um, who was, but uh, who was who was more nervous, you or the hitting coach? <laughs> oh, definitely Turner. Yeah, like he slept like a baby last night. Um, I'll be I'll be just fine. We'll, we'll we'll get around to it. But no, man, we you look at our offense. It's a good offense. I feel really good about it. We're deep. You got guys that that can hit it out of the park. You got some on base guys. You got some speed guys. It, it's actually a really well-built lineup so uh i'm glad we got the home run out of the way i think we're going to hit a couple more but uh i'm excited <laughs> about it <laughs>
Ali, good to see you, man. Appreciate the time, and uh, I'm glad we got the, the Doc Phillips superstars together. Dr. Pepper. Dr. No Dr. doubt. Pepper. At least one of us. Yeah. Hey, yeah. one of us has our jersey on the wall. One of us doesn't. You give them money. I do not. That is such <laughs> bull. <laughs> who, had, who had better stats? Who had better stats in high school? Oh, this guy. Come on, bro. Yeah, it's not even close. Dude, I held like every record. Dude, there's a reason I'm while. coaching. Let's get serious. Come on. <laughs> Cheers, Ollie. Appreciate you, dude. Good to see Take you. Care. No, good seeing you. Guys. Thank you, AJ and Ollie. What a duo. Um, by the way, uh, I thought the answer on Jordan Walker made sense and was interesting. And I like that he pointed that out with AJ talking about it last year on the show. Um, because at the time, you're looking at the batting average and you're like, hey, this dude is early on he's hitting 270 something whatever definitely had outfield work to do that is no doubt he's playing left field yeah i love matt holiday but matt holiday didn't play a gold glove left field no and, and also not that's not Jordan his Walker. natural position he's also 20 years old yeah hitting 278 i think when they sent him down in the big leagues that's tough yeah you better have a lot of ahead of time communication when you talk about a young guy because we were talking about bayo before you know like you communicate with your young guys and that's that guy's role. That is Ollie Marmel's role is to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if, if in case you felt like you were on the outside of an inside joke, it's not that inside. The Cardinals were the only team in baseball that didn't have a spring training home run going into yesterday's action. And thanks to Paul Goldschmidt and the bourbon he drank in the off season, that changed. It, you... <laughs> Stats don't matter in spring. That's training, also an inside joke, by the way. Which is what? Yeah, you got to go back you and go watch. Back, just maybe thirty minutes yeah. back. And Goldie's not a big drinker; it's just for a celebration. What? What happens in spring training? You, they'll laugh about it. They're gonna, like he said, they, you know, they have an easy chance of having two thirty-plus home run guys in this lineup. What? What's the threshold, though? So I don't know That's, what game that was, like game six or something. What? What game does it get to where you go? Are we screwed? We haven't had a home run in spring this, training. Like, is this bad? If it's 14 games into the spring training season, I'm freaking out. It's It was not. I'm like, this it is was Space the ninth Jam. Game. It was the ninth game? It was the ninth Holy game. Shit. I, eventually, it's Space Jam, where I'm like, we lost our powers. It was stolen <laughs> by... We all lost too much weight. Yeah. That's what it is. I can, I can tell you, in, in just a second here, who has the most? The Pirates have 21 spring training home runs. And the Cardinals have one? They have one. Okay, so it goes Pirates, Dodgers, A's, that break the A's up. Break the A's up. And the Dodgers have done it in 14 games. They have 18, so the Pirates did it in 12 games. Go all they the way to the 21. bottom now. All the way to the bottom. The bottom three are the Cardinals, Marlins. That's because they have your boy, Arise. And the Astros and Blue Jays. I mean, it's just... It's an anomaly. Like, I will never – I have never looked at the team home runs before in my life. It does not matter except for when it's a funny story like that and I get you to raise your eyebrows. Wow. One versus 21. That is a big difference. That's a big that discrepancy. That is a large difference. NL Central. Book it. It's the Pirates. The Pirates. <laughs> home run home run chase. Let's go Maybe back. blowing out in Bradenton. Yeah, I guess. Or yeah. when they played in Detroit. That yeah. game might have helped, too. And everything in Jupiter, I guess, is going the other direction right now. But let's go back to AJ to bring him in on the combo on Brian Bayo. So, AJ, we started this, and His obviously move. I felt bad talking about the situation without you. <laughs> but Brian Bayo might be lining up for something in the 550-ish range on an extension with the Red Sox. Are you back with us, dude? Your thoughts? I'm here. Okay. Uh, your, your, your I don't know who loves this? Brian Bayo more, me or uh, Lucy Bird, who we have on with him at MGM. So. I really uh, think it was Lucy. but yeah, she, I think she big, opened she, AJ's she, eyes up to she did. Brian Bayo, right, and how he was underrated, and she was accurate on that. But they figured him out at the end because he was my go-to guy every time he pitched, and then – they they kept slowly upping the K prop, and then it got it got me beat a couple of times. I was like, "Damn, those guys are smart." But listen, I I'm happy I for Brian Bayo. Yeah, listen, we I'm, were just I'm talking about Bayo. that. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy for Bayo. I'm happy that he got an extension. Listen, he won every player. We always say this: get your first one. In Boston, he's going to be a good pitcher. They can lock him up. And it's nice to see the Red Sox are spending some of that money they've been hoarding. <laughs> and and, and I, the comps are not always the same. But if you go similar pitchers. Through age 24 in their career, 
based on service time, Hugo, Chad Cool, injuries kind of beset his career. He was he was killing it early with the Pirates. And Pablo Lopez, that would be a huge savings if they get five for 50. Kevin Gosman, who kind of never really came into his own until he became that like right up to free agency. And then you got like a Nick Martinez. So it's all over the place, those comps. But to me, to me, it's a no brainer. 50 million. You saw it for Luis Severino with the Yankees, who never give out extensions. They gave Sebi an extension. To me, it gives his family lifetime money and it allows him to know he's here, but also they can, they can build around him. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's got the peripherals you're looking for, though. I mean, he's turning 25 in May. I mean, he's a sinker ground ball guy, but he's got a strikeout pitch, too, that I think can continue to improve. You know, the very good changeup that he's gotten. I know Pedro Martinez helps him out with that. But last year, even, I mean, he was above average pitcher. Fenway Park, for some reason, is getting underrated in my mind. Like, it is a hitter's park. Oh. Capital H. Hitters Park. Sometimes I talk to people and they're like, oh, is it, is it more of a hitters park? I'm like, are you kidding me? Jeez. So, I mean, Bayo had a 4-2-4 last year in 28 starts, but ERA plus with 100 at league average, he was at 107. So he would have been a free agent after the 2028 season. My guess is that there'll be some option years in there, so you get more years of Brian Bayo under team control. We're looking at the Red Sox rotation via fan graphs right now. We took Lucas Giolito out of there because at least you imagine he's not going to be there to start the season. He might not be there for the entire season. How would you grade this rotation right now, AJ, in relation to the rest of the division? I mean, it's it's last. I mean, I would think I don't know who Tampa Bay has because, you know, their injuries, but it's definitely behind the Yankees, it's definitely behind the Orioles, and it's definitely behind the Blue Jays. Uh, so and I would say it's probably with even if you throw Savale. Eflin and whoever else they throw out there. I mean, I feel like it's probably the last best. I mean, it would look a lot better. Let's say this. It would look a lot better with Snell or Montgomery or both of those guys. But let me say this about Brian Bayo. The only thing you worry about with him, he does tend to walk guys. And when he walks guys is when he gets in trouble. If he throws it over the plate, he usually has a decent outing. What happens to him is he walks guys, he runs his pitch count up, and he's out after four or five innings. Well, if he doesn't walk guys, he gets it under control, he's a good pitcher. AJ, do you feel like with a sinker ball guy, I used to run into the issue. Every time we got somebody on base, I'm like, here's a sinker ball, ground ball, double play. And all of a sudden you're losing three to one. You're like, wait a minute, what happened? Like I'm constantly, do you feel like because of his lack of th- trying to strike guys out or ability to always strike guys out like the other guys in their rotation, do you feel like you're sitting there going, okay, you know, I got it. We got to figure something out. And that's why he walks guys in the sense that he's like, oh, we got to go that slider right away here. Uh, no, I think I think that'll come with age. I think, listen, if you have a good sinker, you can pretty much throw it and tell people it's coming and they have a hard time. The difference yeah. is, 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 as you know, now, Kratzy, though, the swings are geared more down. Right. So it's yeah. more of like the Mike Trout high to low swing, almost like a golf swing, whereas before, you know, they're it was more of like a, a on top. I mean, they still are on top, but it's just a different way to approach it. And I think that's led to more guys throwing the high fastball. So if you don't, if you're not as good with that sinker, you're not as lo- locate locatable repeatedly over and over again with it. You can run into some problems. But again, when this guy throws it over the plate, he is a good pitcher. Agreed. Let's get to next up on the list: a Ronald Acuna Jr. injury update. Total positive news. I mean. He was on the field taking BP already today and working out with his teammates that weren't going on the Fort Myers trip today. It's coming from Mark Bowman. Our friend covers the Braves. He said Acuna won't be back in the lineup tomorrow. Manager Brian Snicker said he didn't know the exact date that Acuna is slated to be back in the lineup. I think the overall point is that he's basically already participating in what you'd want him to participate in. And we are still about three weeks away from opening day. So there should be very little concern here for Acuna making, you know, the start on day one of the season. I think you do have to manage it still, right? Like you want that irritation to completely evaporate because you know how the season is. And this is an all out player. 
will it ever evaporate completely? I don't know. I, I don't know. I did tear I my know. meniscus, so I have a little bit of experience there. Yeah, it's fine now. And it's never, never bothers you. If know. one of your knees bother you, that's the one it bothers. Like it never goes away. Uh, it's just there. Like the guy's out there every single day. So exactly what you said. You have to mitigate it. And the fact that the fact that you know he still has three weeks to go. I think Adolis Garcia played his first game yesterday. Ironically, hit a dinger, but he played in his first game. They're fine. There's not injuries to position players right now. You definitely want to get it right. To me, you want that two weeks, maybe maybe two and a half weeks, depending on, you know, if you get hit a little skid where you're like, oh, I'm not feeling it, then you have an opportunity to do the whole minor league field one, field two, field one, field two. He'll I don't think we can. He's got three weeks. Yeah. He's got three weeks to go. He'll be just fine. I mean, don't, don't trust me. When that when those lights go on, guess who's showing up? Ronald Acuna Jr. Oh, so but he doesn't. Up. Snit Snit talked about it. Snit didn't necessarily want to play him all 162, and Acuna wants to play all 162. So that's gonna be that's gonna really be on Snit to earn his earn his keep. While he puts the same lineup out every day, he said it stamps the lineup. There's there's a there's a great, great opportunity for him to maybe play 155 if it keeps that knee healthy. But again, it's tough to do when you've got a guy that's a 40-40 candidate. Yeah, good luck. He's going to he's gonna be fighting to get in the lineup. Of course he is. He's in the prime of his career. He's that's having a blast when he's out there. The game comes easy to him, the whole deal. Yep. Let's get to some retirements. Mike Zanino announced his retirement, and he was so freaking close. Do you think guys care about the batting average? Well, first off, let's let's go over the goods, right? Dude was a great defensive catcher, framer, well liked, pitch caller, bopper, had had a home run swing, a swing and miss catcher at the plate, and found himself like a really nice spot within our game for eleven seasons. There's the uh, career stats: one ninety nine, one forty nine homer, three hundred seventy two RBI career, and he did. He struck out, not stuck out, in over 35% of his <laughs> He also stuck opinions. out 35% of his He time. stood out all the time to me, but also was able to blend himself right in with the pitching staff. But anyway, did, did either of you guys know or play with or against him? Yeah, played with him. Played with him in Tampa. He had the, he had the, top, he had the top parking spot when I was there. Closest to the door means he was the most veteran on the entire squad. I think he had like six years of service. Tells you how... Un, un veteran status we were, but awesome dude. I actually met him coming out of college when he was in New York for the Golden Spikes. He was a Golden Spikes finalist in college. And just a mountain of a man, incredible, like always smiling, a, what you want out of the catching position. And he had a lot of starting catcher qualities. I think there was sometimes he, – he was very opportunistic in the sense that it was close to them picking somebody else, and he put together a really good year. Like a Travis Darno kind of season in 2019 when we all played together, Zunino was hurt. They brought me in to fill in for that gap for six weeks, and Darno kind of took his job. Zunino played the role really, really well of the backup that – because Darno kind of outplayed him and he was always there. He was helping guys, never, never was complaining about stuff, always trying to get better at things. It was, he was a pro, but the whole 199 thing, it is what it is. Uh, whatever. I mean, he played 11 years in the bigs. He did plenty of good things. You know, I forget. He was a number three overall pick he in was, 2012. He was a college superstar at where, some school. I've where'd he go? Of. What, what school I'm not sure. I can, Doesn't I can matter. spell Doesn't it matter. out. That's not Doc, that's, Phil, Doc Phillips College. Doctor Pepper. No, Pepper University Pepper. Pepper. Wasn't smart yeah. enough to go to Doctor Phillips. <laughs> when I went, when I was, went a, to UF. When I was released by, I'm not sure who I was released by. Oh, the Red Sox. The Mariners called me his rookie year or maybe his second year, and it was Mike Zanino and Jesus Sucre, and I think they were both hitting like under 140 at the time. I think Sucre had like one hit and Zunino was playing every day and 
they called me the GM and I'm forgetting the GM's name right now. Uh, he called me and he was like, yeah, we'd love for you to sign with us, go down to the minor leagues for 10 days. Boom. We'll call you up after you just get a, get a few reps. Went down to minor leagues. Didn't, didn't get called up on the 10th day. So I had an out because I didn't want to play in Tacoma. It was across the country. I was going to stay on the East coast. If I was going to be in triple a and the GM called me and he's like, yeah, you know, we're not looking to send Mike Zanino down right now. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're not going to call you up. And I was like, well, I'm not, I said, I'm not trying to take Zanino's job. That's not at all. Like I'm, I'll just be the backup. I figured they were going to send Sucre out and call me up. And he goes, and he goes, yeah, we're, we're definitely not going to change you out for Zunino. And I was like, all right, clearly you didn't listen to me. Well, that GM got fired about a week later. First thing that happened, Mike Zanino got sent down. Whoa. So Mike and I almost played together in Seattle. Was it this guy? I can't say his name. That's Jack why. Zarenzik. Zarenzik, yeah, thank I, you. Yep. So, so you were like, I'm not trying to take his job. And he was like, you won't take his job. He said it twice. He was like... You're not gonna. You're not gonna. And I was like, I 100% know. I know. I am a backup. I get that. I just want to come in and, you know, really be, you know, a mentor or whatever he needs. Well, I think that we might need to bring Jack Sorensic on the show at some point to clear this out because okay. I've I've done a couple shows with him. It was years ago at this point. I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in a minute. I don't know what he's doing now. He he did a studio what year show was this, back in the day. Fifteen. So you want you want to hear along the same lines? So in '15, I was with Atlanta, and I was having a good year, and I was on a one-year deal. And, and the, the John Hart, John Coppola, the two Johns were in charge, and I've known John Hart for 30 years. And we're in Miami, and it was like around June-ish, and it was right when Zanino was kind of struggling, and and you know whatever, and they didn't know what they were going to do. And John Hart comes up to me at the pool at the at the Ritz Carlton, the Biscayne Bay, there in Miami. He goes, "Hey, what, what are you okay? You know, what do you think about getting traded, possibly?" And I, my exact quote was, "As long as it's not to Seattle, I'm good with anywhere else." And he's like, "Oh, oh, okay." And then I found out like a couple weeks later that they they were like, I guess close to like sending me to Seattle, but John John did me a solid by not sending me to Seattle. Thank goodness. Wait, I need more. Oh. First off, why Seattle? That's your one team unofficial Dude. no trade clause at the time? No, no. I was okay. I was in Atlanta, okay, mm. which is a 45 minute flight from my house, right? All of a sudden I'm having to take a six hour plane flight, my family. No, thank you. I was literally like, sure, as long as it's not to Seattle. And it, the, you could tell the look on his face, he was like, oh shit, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but he's like, what about it? It, wasn't like I, it wasn't like I didn't have a no trade, but he was like, he did me a, so I have so thank you, Copy and, and John Hart for not sending me to Seattle. What about Colorado? What if it was? I, I, I just said as long far. as it's not to Seattle. That was okay. the only thing That's I said. Far. It's it's I way know, it's farther far. out there, and that is literally the opposite ends of the like. He was in Miami, so he was literally yeah. the farthest away. Now I know it was that day, and and bring up you know a movement or a transaction circle full circle, 2016. The Braves are struggling. I'm on my whatever fourth team. I am going to pick up my son at camp where there's no service up in the mountains. I get a call from John Coppolello. He says, do you want to sign with the Braves? Said, sure, I don't have a job. I'll go to Gwinnett. That's totally cool. He said, no, we don't want you to go to Gwinnett. We want you to be in Gwinnett for a little bit, and then we're going to call you up to the big leagues. I was like, Sure you will. Whatever. I've heard all this. I go, I go, let me call my wife. I got to pick my son up. So I was up there. He tried to call me while I was up there. I get off the mountain. I call him or my agent calls him and he goes, he goes, yeah, we'll take the job. He goes, okay, great. 10 minutes later, John Coppolello calls my agent and goes, actually, somebody else offered a contract to Michael McHenry so he's going to go and take the job. So I technically was a brave for about 10 minutes because I agreed to a contract, didn't when, when sign it. It? it had to be in the middle of the year. 16, probably. Yeah, it was in the middle of the year. It was, it was between. Yeah. I, I'd look it up when I. We had Anthony Recker. That's who ended up coming up. 
Well, because Kyler was Flowers after, went down and Anthony Recker came up in like July ish because Tyler Flowers broke his hand, got hit by a pitch, and then so then Anthony was, Recker came. And then we had uh and that was when I went on the DL IL with anal fissures. Yep. Uh and then they called up another catcher and I said and that was when they were like, Yeah, well, you know, you can go home. They put me on the aisle again for a second time for a hamstring. A fake. And uh they were like, they had a catcher, but they were like, we don't want to lose him in case for next year. And I'm like, dude, nobody's picking this dude up. I forget who it was. And it was legit. He never, I don't think he ever played again. Was it Jack? But Did it they call McKenna. Jackson up? Was that when Jackson was a prospect? No, or was it, was a, it was an older guy that hit left hand. I forget what his name was. Yeah. I, I would I would totally be able to figure it out. But, yeah, so he was just yeah. he was just out there slinging, slinging job offers to people. And he ended up signing McHenry. McHenry ended up playing like three weeks. I think they put him on the Phantom IL or something there. Like they they did him dirty. So I'm glad I didn't sign there. I'm Lolly. Blake, Blake Lolly was the guy. Wow. Oh, yeah. Lolly. Little little utility guy too. I mean, he can play other yeah, they're positions. They're like, oh, we don't want to lose him for next year. He's going to be important for the organization. I'm like, who? Is he a coach? Is he a coach now? I don't know. what. I don't know. I never hey. met the guy. never seen the guy. Nothing. Yep. It's but they that's did the baseball. Braves, the Braves actually, I'll say this the Braves did me two solids. They did me, they didn't trade me to St. Louis or Seattle that year. And then my last year in 16, they're like, hey, we're going to start you this game and then we're going to, you know, put you on the IL or whatever. And so I got my family, and I knew it was my last game. So my family all got to come in and everyone. So I knew it was that's my cool. last game. So yeah, it was, it was awesome of them to do that. That's pro. Somehow the catcher geography from the Zanino retirement got us to this, but I like those stories. Those, those were great. Let's see if we can replicate that with another retirement that was announced a couple of days ago, and we didn't have time to get to it because we've been talking to 9 million people at camps. But congratulations to Josh Donaldson on his retirement as well. There you go. The little thank you. And, ooh, interesting, in a Blue Jays uni, which obviously he did damage with there, but he yeah. also was a beloved Oakland A. And I've been told that Josh Donaldson will be hopping on this show tomorrow at 11.15 a.m. Eastern time. So if you'd like Josh Donaldson unfiltered on foul territory, we'll see you in about 24 hours. I hope he's unfiltered. I hope he's unfiltered and not not trying to put on a face because what he brings can bring energy to this game. Mm -hmm. What, What he brings to the clubhouse every day, what he or what he brought to the clubhouse every day he is that's yes i get it he's an mvp he was putting up mvp type of numbers and bringing a swag bringing a just just a pungent aroma of getting the boys going he could that i think that homer right there in the top right with oakland donaldson there i think he hit two homers that day against uh bruce chen Brought him in, poor Bruce Chen. Are you like kidding a, me that you have the recognition to just look at a picture like that and know the moment? I just, I just know it's Kansas City, and um, I remember he hit two dingers. They're missing a big team on there, too. I know it was a short stint, but he crushed it. Crushed it with the Braves. Yeah. <laughs> you could make a case that they should replace the Yanks uniform with the Braves uni because he did damage there, and obviously you know, the end of the run there with the Yanks wasn't great. Right? Yeah. I need yeah. an ATL in there. What about the Brewers? They didn't throw the Brewers on there either. I think that was that was okay to leave the Brewers on. Listen, I, listen I, I mean, Donaldson's coming on tomorrow, 11-15. I'll be honest, and we've had him and I have had this conversation. Dude, we hated each other. But he's actually – I've got to know him off the field. He's he's actually a pretty good dude. But we, we, we had some battles. When he was in Oakland, I was in Texas. There was a couple moments where I was like, this could happen right here at home plate. This might go down. He wasn't going to – he wasn't gonna take any any lip no. from anyone else. He he was playing, and and you're not gonna take any lip from anybody else. Where if somebody says something to me, I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's cool. You can call me. No, pansy, I was like, but, you, I was a little bit yeah. more like, what what'd you, what'd you say? You know, plus when you have all the catchers gear on, you're like, hit me, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, he got a bat thrown at him by. Well, Manny Machado. Yeah, he did. Listen, dude, he was a great that. player. He went from a, don't forget, he was a catcher, became a third baseman, and won an MVP. Did a lot of really yeah. good things. He also was the king of bat flipping. 
right? And the ball would go to the he, warning track. Have you seen the compilation on like I think it's on uh, well, <laughs> funny though. That's I know it's just funny. A, yeah. We'll ask him about it tomorrow. Of course. He won't care. Did he grind opponents' gears as much as anyone in baseball? Oh. Oh. What was it though? Like, what is the secret sauce to that? Is it trash what talk? Crack's good? You just don't back down. You just don't back away. If someone says something, you're like, "Fuck you, let's go." Like, yeah, what? Yeah. Oh, I heard you. Okay, next time, let's go. Like, he just, he just, he was that dude when you look when you played him. You were like, "All right, this dude's gonna give every ounce of what he has on that field, and he is not gonna be friendly." Which is fine. I wasn't friendly either, and I'm like, and just he wasn't gonna do it. He that's how he had to play. He, everyone thought he, he thought everyone in the world hated him. And you know what? He won a damn MVP, had a great career, made a shitload of money. So mm. God bless you, Josh, great career. And, you know, you should be a Blue Jay. You won MVP as a Blue Jay, so that's what you should be. I want to ask, I want to ask him, I heard a story from an Oakland A that played with him. Every time Billy Bean would come into the locker room when he was killing it with Oakland, he would go like a homer the night before. Should have locked me up yesterday. Just getting more and more expensive. So I can't wait. I can't wait to ask him that stuff. I've never met Josh, but we have a lot of close mutual friends that speak so highly of this dude as a competitor and somebody that was that was in it for the guys. I'm excited to talk to him tomorrow. All right, I, I guess we have. I mean, I'm coming on on a Friday to talk to him. Yeah, oh, that's special. Friday, Friday special. AJ. Friday AJ is a good AJ. Oh, no. But I'm only coming so on for that because then I have other stuff I have to do. But I'm just coming. Yeah, on I know, I know. Oh. Just a cameo, a little morning mimosa with with JD. Cameos then... are hundred bucks, by the way. I'm just saying, cameo, <laughs> cameo. <I'll have> <laughs> I don't guess for birthday, I guess for for AJ. All for right. AJ's cameo. Well, on, on that front, on on the social media topics, uh, apparently Jordan Montgomery unfollowed the Texas Rangers, and he's following the Dodgers. That's our buddy Josh at, at JS Nine Innings. Look at JS. I'm like, look at Josh. Okay. You think Jordan Montgomery runs his own Twitter or Instagram? Can I mean? you dispel this? Do you think Jordan Montgomery sits on Twitter and follows and unfollows? No. Maybe he's got a really good. Or maybe he's agent bored because he's not on a team right now. Who knows? Any anything, right? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't really even know how to unfollow somebody unless. Maybe I do. Derek. Maybe on Twitter. Maybe it's one of those things we can. Yeah, maybe we can hit the top right button. Anyway, I don't know. Okay, we'll see what happens. <laughs> um AJ, you got someone coming through? I got Derek Gould that's standing here looking at me, so I figured we could bring him on, discuss all things Cardinals. I mean just keep him yeah, looking. Tony, at you. He talked to Tony Clark, he talked to Ollie Marmel, he talked to John Mosalock today. I mean, he's our Ooh. Cardinal insider, so I mean hey, you know, he's standing he, he was down. like the kid he's like the kid that's like at the basketball court and he's standing there and he's just like you know, not trying to act like he's not really looking, but you can tell he totally wants to come in. <laughs> and then he made eye contact with you, and he's like, "Yeah, oh, oh me? Oh, no, sure, no, he I actually did the time. fake walk away. He did the fake walk away. That's what he did. <laughs> Let's do this, okay? I got a plan. We we have our, our BetMGM win totals teams for the day. AJ, we'll let you go first, and then okay. once well, you're done I have with a, your team. I have someone here. Hold on. Not too far. There he is. There you go. Once there you're done is. with your teams, AJ, okay, then we'll go over uh -huh. ours while we get Derek all set up, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. Your BetMGM win total over. teams. Cardinals is over. <laughs> you don't do the team. What a homer. On the day that we're at their camp, the Cleveland Guardians at 79 and a half, the Toronto Blue Jays at 87 and a half dubs, and the Washington Nationals at 66 and a half. Thanks. Here's what the you under, got, under Thank Cleveland, you. Thank you for this. under Toronto, just because I think the division's better, over Washington, because I think wow. that number is low. Okay, good stuff. We'll get back to you in one sec with Derek. Kratz? Man, I feel like there's two easy ones here. The under from Cleveland, and I think that's the easiest one. So you think Cleveland is not even a 500 ball club this no. year with the pitching that they have? I don't. I agree with you. They got rid of And, and they're going to trade somebody, Beaver. Yeah. 
And if somebody does do well, like Bieber, he gone. He gone. Now, now there could be a resurgence. Maybe they really like Gavin Williams. I, I, I love his stuff. I think there's just – and he made an adjustment his last four or five starts where he wasn't walk as many, walking as many guys. But he toes that line at the top of the zone with elite – Vila, I mean, elite carry at the top of the zone, and he throws that curveball off of it. But anybody that sees spin, he wasn't landing it for strikes. So I'm going under. I'm going to not answer on Toronto yet. And then I'm going over on the Nats. The Nats. All right. Well, we're going to go quick because then we're going to go to Derek in a minute. Um, I will go under on Cleveland. Yeah, I, I think if the pitching's too good, you trade it away. Even Class A, maybe too. There's not enough offense there. I'm going under on Toronto. I don't feel like they improved their roster this year. I think so much went right with their staff besides Alec Manoa. Their staff besides Alec Manoa was nails last year. You're already seeing some shoulder issues pop up for Alec, for Gossman. So I think they go under and it's a better division this year. The Yankees will be back in my mind and more competitive. And I'll go over on the Nationals. I think they're a little better than that. And they're going to keep scooping up all these veterans on minor league deals and put together a pretty good team since <laughs> apparently nobody wants guys like Eddie Rosario. I think that's super weird. So, uh, And you got to finish on Toronto. What's your problem? Like, Toronto, hey, Toronto. Because I can't believe that a pitching staff did that well when their previous season's All-Star did not do well. Sure. So – is there going to be some regression? I think there's going to be regression. I think they're going to be solid, not as good as those top four were. I think there's going to be regression, and I think there's going to be more regression because they don't have Matt Chapman playing third base, and I put a lot, a lot of value in that I'm going under. Yeah, that's a huge loss. I agree with you. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the BetMGM Sportsbook app or online at betmgm.com and you will receive $150 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. Got to use the bonus code FOUL, F-O-U-L. And you can sign up for the BetMGM Sportsbook app during the pre-registration period in North Carolina. BetMGM is coming to you and opening up live in about a week. You'll receive $200 in bonus bets if you use that bonus code FOUL when you sign up during the pre-reg period. Um, and then those bonus bets come through on the first day that the BetMGM Sportsbook goes live in North Carolina. Live. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. And back out to Cardinals camp. Let's welcome in our friend Derek Gould from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Back with AJ. Derek, good to see you. How is Cardinals camp going this year? You know, we're obviously getting the perspective from the players, but... In your mind, you saw really a dumpster fire last year for St. Louis. There were some problems publicly that made it probably fun for you to write about it. It's not like you had a lack of content for a you know low 70s win team, but do you feel like things are truly different this, this time around? Because actually, they're favored by many publications and even by the odds to win the division. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh... You know, it's it's different when you have the kind of pitching that they brought in. You know, that's always a good kind of bedrock to build from, especially whether you're going on, like, predictive models or betting models or whatever. If they have the durable pitching or, like, kind of the known quantity pitching, that's a good place to start. And to be honest, they didn't last year. Um, you know, they were kind of built on quicksand when it came to pitching last year, and it all caught up with them, and they could never quite regain the innings, especially after that first month, that first kind of long stretch of games where they struggled with uh, – starting and length, you know, the length of the starters and just had a whole long uh, kind of a real difficult schedule as far as uh, travel too. So they never really got back to that. Um, so they're starting spring from a spot where they got Gibson in, they got Lance Lynn in, you know, coming into spring, they had Sonny Gray set. So those were known quantity innings. Those were things that they could count on. And that's a good place to begin um, far better than where they were last year. Do they need innings eaters? We had John Mazalek on just about 45 minutes ago, and AJ was praising about how they wanted strikeout guys. Did he go to this starting pitching market for strikeout guys and go, a little too much, let's get inning eat innings eaters? Yeah, I think, uh, well, one of the things that they want to do real quick was get those innings in place so that then they could explore or at least be in a spot where they could look at different options. You know, Sonny Gray was really on top of their shopping list 
that was pretty clear even early before the season gave out, just right probably after the trade deadline, it became pretty clear as they started mapping out what they wanted to do and sort of their plan A, plan B, their their best case scenario, their we better at least get scenario. Um, and Sonny Gray was that best case scenario. They really thought there would be a mutual interest there. Um, but they moved quick to get like Gibson and Lynn just to give them stability in that spot, to give them those innings to build off of. Um, and then they went searching for strikeout rates in the bullpen. Um, you saw that more often there where, you know, some of the moves weren't necessarily for experienced guys or known guys or guys who even have experience in the, the roles that the Cardinals like them to have. But what they do have is they have that – they delight the pitch metrics and they delight the uh, the idea of missing bats and they give them that potential. And the spring is kind of then jockeying for role, jockeying for opening day spot. And then, of course, the whole season, the, the bullpen will change. But they feel they have more strikeouts out there. They want to begin with innings. And if they could get – I like your, your the way you put it there. Like they saw the price tag of strikeouts. But they knew that they had to at least get innings. Anything beyond that from the rotation – then it was about like what's the price point, what's the opportunity, where do they go? Whereas then in the bullpen, they knew they could identify strikeouts and go with quantity of those guys, try to add them and see who emerged. Is there anybody here at Cardinals camp, because you've been here the whole time, that yeah. has stood out? Is there a guy that you've looked at and said, oh, man, he's bringing more to the table, whether it's a veteran or a young guy that can help this team? Yeah, I mean, Riley O'Brien, as far as the newcomers go, he's really stood out. You know, velocity, getting ahead of pitchers – or, I'm sorry, getting ahead of hitters, getting ahead in the, in the count and then able to put guys away. Um, you know, uh, Ryan Fernandez, uh, Rule 5 pick, he's got real legit stuff. Um, he's shown well. Um, you know, Nolan Gorman seems, from a returning perspective – Nolan Gorman has really stood out as far as like what his presence is. It's hard to also not just like point out Wilson Contreras. Second year, um, he, he had a great second half offensively. Everybody know I was on your all's program talking about some of the drama that he went through when he was removed from the catching spot. The way he surged, the way he took over, and really the spring, the way he's established a tone, whether it's with the catchers or his relationship with the pitchers, just his confidence and how much he is like filling the clubhouse with his presence stands out. By the way, who's behind us? <laughs> I mean, I see Al, but like, it's like the president just pulled up. There's like, that's four, Al. Al. There's Hibosky. like four Cadillac Escalades of like security that just pulled up. And I'm like, who the heck is back here? There's no, like, it's, it's Al Herbowski. Uh, just yeah, Al. Yeah. That's how he rolls. That's how he rolls. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's like Kratz when he shows up somewhere. Uh, get a TV gig in St. Louis, you know, do the, do the Valley sports that you roll out with that entourage. AJ's Ubers all showed up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's a legend. Uh, Derek, how's Sonny Gray? And, you know, do we have an idea of you know, how much time he might miss slash who would be the opening day starter for the Cardinals? He's right instead? here. He's, like here. he's, just, he's walking he's, right he's by. He's literally walking over. We're about to kick Derek he's, off uh, the air. Gonna, as we that is me. epic. So, that, so don't around. answer that. <laughs> yeah, I won't. I won't give away. He, Don't answer he was supposed that. to play catch. Oh, so, sorry, I shouldn't give away the spoiler that he was supposed to play catch today at about 60 feet and uh, how he was feeling. So he can, he can ask him about that. Perfect. We'll do that. So we'll let you jump. Derek, great to talk to you, dude. Appreciate the time. Always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks for giving me a chance to say hello to AJ. Thank you. Oh, of course. The second legend after Al in camp. Thanks, Derek. <laughs> um, Derek Gould from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, you can follow him at D Gould, D G O O L D on Twitter. And as he just mentioned, we'll get ready for Sonny Gray coming up in just a moment. Big league last name. Gould. 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 Like even when you say it, you got to put effort into it. Gould. The other thing I was going to ask him, but we ran out of time, is the rest of the division. I mean, for me, I'm still personally surprised that the Cubs didn't have a dominant offseason. I think they were indicating that. They didn't say the they words. Got, they, they didn't say rained, those two words. They got rained out in the seventh inning. Because they said they were in the fifth inning, and then yeah. they made the Cody Bellinger move, and it was like... I think they said, oh, oh fifth, that was five yeah. through nine. Rain out. <laughs> rain out. We're done. Maybe they jump in here. They make a lot of sense for some of those Stop. big names. Try to go a show without mentioning... Some of those names, but nope. Yeah, I already blew it. it. Yeah, I already blew did, it. I already did. That. That's that's a rookie mistake. Actually, the intern that controls Jordan Montgomery's social media account blew it because they're following and unfollowing things. 
<laughs> my, I would give more. I would give more credence to the fact that Monty would do his own Instagram than if he had an intern. There's no way Jordan Montgomery has an intern of his own. Okay, but does Boris Corp? Yeah, maybe, maybe, but some helpers. Jordan Montgomery himself, you would never see him with an assistant. He doesn't have a guy holding his purse. Mm -hmm. If that's what you're, if that's what you're trying to picture, Jordan Montgomery. Is that a compliment? I think it's a compliment, right? That's he's a, he's a, compliment. a DIY guy. He is. He's just down to earth. He's down to earth. Dope. We can even ask Sonny about it. Sonny knows that Monty's a dope. Oh yeah. In the, I forgot in the, the best, connection there. In the best, in the best meaning of dope. Mm -hmm. Just and, an awesome dude. And we'll go back out to Sonny in just a sec. I'm going to remind him about this, but I think he's just about ready. So I think he can hear me and then we'll go. Yeah, we'll go back out to him. Trivia question for our hosts. Who is the most requested player in all of Major League Baseball to appear on this show? On our chat. I know. Sonny. It's true. Yeah, let's go to him right now. It's true. I'm not making this up. We don't say this to everybody. There he is. He's right here. Yeah, flash. yeah, yeah. Sonny, do you know about this? Uh, he told me this morning, and I was like, wow. Look at that. Look at us go. It's your good looks. That's what it is. And you're kind of like – you're kind of like the next, the, the boy next door. Like you're just a, you're, you're very, you're not, you're very slightly built. You have slight hips <laughs> and you're just, you're not intimidating. Well, I appreciate you. I'm pretty, I, I, I think that's a, I'm taking it as a compliment. So, uh, okay, good, 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 good. It like that or not, like that's the way I'm taking it. So all good there. In, intimidating in bullpen sessions though, no? Okay. I want to hear about the bullpen sesh. A little 60 the, feet, six uh, inches. Yeah, maybe that's the um, the short short guy syndrome or whatever, like small small dog, big big bite or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's just that's what it is. Carry that carry that little chip with you a little bit, you know. I okay, like so it. you threw today, right? I did. I threw today. So the rain, the rain didn't mess you up, did it? Uh, nah. It's, I mean. I felt a little tweak in my hamstring in my game two days ago. So I just thought, you know what, like, why not? Let's just go out there in the middle of the rain. It'd be a good day to test it. You know what I'm saying? If you can, if you can do this today, then you should be okay. So, so I was like, let's just, let's just, that's just smart. Let's go, let's go do that. You didn't run though. You just threw it. Right? Yeah. We just played catch. I did a, a lot of stuff. It's uh, it feels feeling good. Better? Yeah. Feeling it feels better? good. Okay. It, I said it was never a, it was, it was a very precautionary thing that I um, I was just trying to do the right thing. It's one of those that you're like, ah, I don't know what to do right now. I don't know what to do right now. And then as soon as you say something, it's like, hey, we're gonna just we're gonna stop right here. Okay. Which I get it. Well, which is which was the right thing to do. Was it your first first spring start? Second, second, second. Yeah, yeah. Second. So we were in Nats camp. You pitched down in Nationals. Yes. So we had uh, Lane Thomas on. Okay. And I go, who are you facing today? And, and on MLB.com, it had Michaelis. But I'm like, yep. he's like, I think Sonny's pitching. So I gave him a scouting report. I'm like, you know, if he throws you a high heater, he's going to back it up with a curveball or the sweeper. I'm like, so once he goes high heater, dive out there. Yeah. Well, so got him out. So my scouting report sucked. I think the way that he took that was swing at the first pitch of the game. <laughs> uh, I didn't tell him that. I didn't tell him that part of it. I, I was trying to get him to build in at bat. Yeah. Swing at the first pitch of the game, see what happens. It was good. You. When you when you pulled your hamstring uh, in twenty two, you did it twice, right? So I did it the second game of the season. A uh, similar feeling, very similar feeling of this, and then um, yeah, and then at the end of the season, um, I went back on the IL with it, with probably like two, maybe three weeks of the season left. Um, was it was it your right leg? Was it your right leg? Because yeah, I was thinking pitchers. I always think of pitchers extending out and that front leg, you pull the hamstring. So it's to me, it's weird, but I'm not as athletic as you are because you are absolutely the most freakish athlete pitcher that I've ever played with. But there's that. Yeah, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment as well. Um, that wasn't a compliment. Me, like, for me, like in my in my movements, though, it's I'm more of a – if you see it, when I'm at my best, I'm more of a lift. 
and then I'm kind of a sit and I really get this, this front hip and everything. I have this little like hip move thing that I do. That's very, very important to me. So it's more of a, it's more of a sit with my right leg a little bit. It's like a sit and then a drive and explode down. So that was kind of, that was kind of where it was. It was like on the lift and then the sit and the drive. Um, it's kind of where it was. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a like overstretched thing or like you, you like lunged out and you stretch. So it makes sense on the left leg as far as like a thing, but like, I'm not, I don't have a problem. I'm like being mobile. Like I'm, I'm pretty mobile. Like I'm hyper, like hyper flexible and all that. It, this was more of a sit drive, uh, push off thing. And it just kind of like grabbed on me a little bit in the middle of it. So, um, all in all, it's, it was, it's, it's not that big of a, of a thing. It is something that I have to stay on top of. And I've known that. And, that's the shit part is I feel like I've done a good job of staying on top of it, but sometimes just, you know, things pop up and you, you move forward and, uh, and that's all you can do sometimes. Hey, that's a Vanderbilt education right there, by the way, you know, he's talking about hip popping and driving, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, if he would have went to Dr. Phillips, like me and his manager though, we would have, we'd have never let this stuff happen because we're way ahead of Vanderbilt. Don't even know what that move <laughs> is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't nobody nobody goes to Dr. Pepper High School. Like yeah. just just let them know. <laughs> Twenty three flavors. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Exactly, Sonny. He tells you south. He that. knows that. <laughs> He's tell. Is you, there a chance though that you could wipe, that you could pitch opening day still? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I um, okay. doing everything I can to to put myself in a position to to be available, but it's um, I, I I just don't know. I um, I played catch today, uh, so I threw, and then I don't throw the day after I pitch ever, anyways. Uh, and then an off day yesterday. So as far as the throwing things, I haven't like didn't miss a day of throwing. Uh, played catch today. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, probably no more through the weekend to be, to be honest with you. Um, probably just no more through the weekend, but I will say like today was a good day throwing, doing everything moving wise is, is good and everything's been productive. So I'm not trying. I, I mean, I know you guys have been through an injury and you're call it what it is. Like you, you try not to, to look ahead too much because it doesn't, it doesn't do yourself any, any real benefit to do that. Um, just try to stack the days, right. I'm just trying to stack the good days of being productive and feeling good in a row. And then wherever that shakes out, when it, when it shakes out, it will. Um, so that's truly what I'm, what I'm, I, I, what I'm doing now is like, you know, I, I'm looking at it like, you know, today I did everything normal. I played catch. Uh, I felt good. I felt strong. And, now let's come in tomorrow and see where you feel and, and move from there. And then once we get into it and I, and I pick it up and I, m me and the performance team and everyone feels comfortable, then we may start seeing where we're at, but we're just not there yet. We talk all the time about like pressure of a contract. Does this decision on your hamstring, is it different if you're 2017 Sonny Gray? Is it different if you're, 2021 Sonny Gray, you know, you are the anchor of this staff. You were a top three Cy Young candidate. You were, you, you're, you're, there's a lot on your plate here. So is there pressure to one, take it easy and make sure you have the best 31 starts instead of the best three starts and it pops up again, or is there no pressure and you're just being who you are? That's a good question, uh, Kratzy. I um, I look at it as yes. If it was two thousand seventeen, Sonny may uh, try and do too much. He may try and not do too much. I, I don't know. I, I, I look at that as I do look at this as past experiences and as played and understanding that yes, in order for um, me to to personally have success and perform this year uh that would and, and the team to to have success i want to be a part of that i want to be a big part of it i want to be on the field as as much as i can at the same time like i also understand that 
if whether I pitch the first game of this of the, of the season, the third, the fifth, or the seventh, I understand that I can't do it. I can do everything in my power to get myself ready and available, but I, I can't. I can't go out there and do something that may re-aggravate something or do something that that puts not only myself but then the team in jeopardy as well to to just say okay i'm going to do everything i can and i'm going to throw that first game whether you're ready for it or not um so i i look at it i i guess the 2024 sunny would look at it as like you know you have been through this you understand what it takes you understand the longevity of the season you understand everything and you understand for for me personally and for us as a team to get where we want to go it's not going to me pitching opening day or me pitching game one or game five or game one or game six or game one or game three is not going to be a deciding factor uh, of the longevity and the and the, the the success of the team moving throughout but me me pitching game one and you know me saying like yeah i'm ready i'm ready and pitching game one and not being ready and then missing another and then having to say oh you know restart and do another month and a month and a half that's not good for anybody. That's not good for for anybody involved. So, I do understand that, but at the same time, I'm still um, I'm still doing everything in my power. And physically, I do feel I feel I feel really good. Um, whether whether it's where I was a couple of days ago, I, I I do physically feel feel good and capable of of progressing this thing on a on a on a on a faster track. And I think everyone in the in the building does as well. So. Uh, but also everyone understands what I just said. Um, that's, uh, I mean, that's the, the gives and takes of, of a being a high, high competitive person, a wanting to, to be there for your guys. And, and I a hundred percent will be, but also like making sure that it's not going to be something that you're going to, I always say like to be there for the team and be there for the guys, you have to, you have to be available. And and I think people understand that. I, I don't know. I could talk about that all day, but that's just kind of where I'm at. Mm-hmm. So before you came on, Kratzy was saying, because we were talking about I saw you go out here, and Kratzy mm-hmm. said, you know, the real reason is, you know, the first four games are at L.A. Mm-hmm. And you said, and he said that you would rather pitch against the Padres mm-hmm. than against the Dodgers. So can you tell him that? <laughs> yeah, that's not a, that's look, that's that's messed up. That's not a compliment. There you go. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a slight dig right there. I don't appreciate that one. Um, and you, and you, uh, <laughs> I'm totally. I, I don't appreciate that. Totally. One. No. Uh, <laughs> that's totally that, that feels like something Kratz would say. I get that. All right. So what? You, you sign with the. Go ahead. So you sign with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. There was rumors of Cincinnati. Some a lot of other teams. Minnesota obviously would have loved to have had you back. Were you close to signing with another team? And also, what was it about St. Louis that drew you here? Because you signed quick this offseason. Mm-hmm. You were one of the first guys, like mm-hmm. dominoes to fall. So what was it about St. Louis? Um. Yes, there were other teams. There were probably four or five teams before St. Louis, and we went, we went, we were kind of deeper into talks with a few other teams, to be honest with you. And um, I went to went to bed, went to bed a couple of nights thinking that you know the next day I'm going to sign with this team, and it is what it is. I I. You can name the teams. You're nah, now. yeah, I don't know. Though. I don't the Reds guess, confirmed uh, they were one. Nick Crawl uh, and yeah, the Reds did say one. The Reds were yeah. were definitely one at the end, and and it ultimately did come down to those two at the end. Um, these the, the Reds and the Cardinals at the end. Um, but I'd went to bed a couple nights before thinking that I was going somewhere else. To be completely honest with you, and. Um, so then the Cardinals got involved, and as soon as they did, I mean, me and me and Jessica had a conversation, uh, my wife, and we had talked about. I mean, that's a place that it would when we sat down at the beginning of the free agency after the season, and you kind of list all thirty teams. That was definitely a team that was right, right there at the top. And um, but then the free agency is weird. Uh, it, it, it was cool and it was awesome, but it was also very weird because then you go down this rabbit hole of like you can see yourself and your family in this situation and you're like oh, okay and you get deep into that and you're like well and then the cardinals call and you're like ah you know and then you, you got to take a step back and say you know what like where where when this thing started and everything where did i want to where did i want to be and ultimately it did it came down to a i would say it came down to three teams at the end and uh well, who you got to tell us who the third it was one. the diamondbacks the oh reds and the okay cardinals 
So three, yeah, okay. At three. the end, but before that, that we were, there were a few other teams that that you we were popular. We were because you were good. Well, thank you, compliment. <laughs> Appreciate yes. that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is this is ultimately where we wanted to be at the beginning of this thing, and thankfully, it's where we we ended up at the end of it. I love it. Well, Sonny, I'm sure you're glad to be where you are now. Um, appreciate you coming on. I hope the the fans got what they wanted because you yeah. were highly requested. And, and hopefully, what, we can grab you one more time at some point, yes? I definitely want to have you on more, Sonny. So let's make sure this well, happens. But I also, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, me and Sonny went out. We went to Toronto, and we were going out to a meal. And now, and Sonny's, Sonny was a younger guy. You were getting, you weren't, you weren't reaching free agency. You just got traded to the Yankees. We're in Toronto. CC says, boys, we're going out. You, me, a couple other people, we go out. CC paid for the whole dinner. CC, and this was a really nice restaurant in Toronto. And Sonny was sitting next to me. He goes, man, I'm going to tell you, I really don't know CC. He goes, but. That is really big league of him to pick up this whole tab. I kind of want to do that when I'm a big leaguer and I get a lot of money. <laughs> so now you got a lot of money. So now it's time to do that. I, I, I remember that night when we went to some we went to some club and it was like I, I it was like LeBron and <laughs> LeBron and Drake were at the tables next to us. And I'm sitting there just like, man, I'm a long way from Oakland right here. Uh, that <laughs> had it had all the lights. It had all the lights hanging in the club, and there was just bottles everywhere. I did that the right crazy. thing though. CC snuck out the back door, and he was like, "Where are you going?" He was like, "But," and I was like, "I'm I'm going with you. You ain't leaving me here by myself. I'm out this mug." Yep. So we yep. did that. And uh, I was gonna say that you need to tell the fans and everything. I I, I won't have to hold my my hand up right now. Oh. We can get some better earpieces in this piece. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so next time, maybe we'll be able to get into all this you know what i'm saying but but I, you know we were, we were talking about that over here so i told him you can get custom ones you know they fit right in there fit nicely yeah of course. You no, have the future in this bring job. them on the tablet next time we'll get you the ta on the tablet yeah. when he's, when your he's own at bush stadium that nope. bush stadium wi-fi we'll be good so we'll line it up no you got a deal no more ear earpiece bullshit and we'll bring you back all right there you go there you go appreciate you thank you sonny good to see you dude yeah, thank you all very much. Y'all have a good day. You too. Appreciate you. It's Sonny Gray with us at Cardinals Camp. You know, he'll get um, out of there and send his his floppy earpiece over to our, our dude who's waiting. Lance is going to hate that earpiece. And he has to sit next I to AJ. I feel like Lance is kind of tolerant, it, it, probably a good way to put it at this point. You think point. so? I, I was, four, four daughters, you think he's tolerant? Uh, forget that. I was catching up with my family and they were like what's up with lance's car and i was like it's pink bronco what they I were mean, like he picked that and i was like no i think he came home one day and his family just got it repainted and i'm like what are you gonna do piss off your kids no that is so great that is luscious that they got they just he came home and it was painted his brand <laughs> his brand new car i can't speak to this i don't have children but you tell me you get home right now the car is pink what do you do i'm cheap i'm pissed i'm like how much did you spend to paint my car what if it was free man I but it'll it. cost 10 g's to repaint my kids wouldn't be like oh that's cool but four girls he lives in the estrogen ocean like he is a hundred percent everything is pink so that's his life i'm 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 happy for him. Barbie was a big deal in 2023. It does kind of look like the Barbie car. It does. It does kind of look like the Barbie car. I, I love it. So I can't wait to ask him about it. We'll have Lance joining us in just a sec on FT. But obviously, that was great stuff from Sonny. And I would love to have him on the show more often. I mean, dude can he's, talk. He'll lay it out for oh you. Man, he's He'll so kind of take you through exactly what's going on in his brain. Like your question about, hey, you, you signed. You're coming off a huge year. Now you have a little thing to deal with in spring training. How does that all circulate between balancing being ready for opening day versus being ready for 31 starts? That's it's a real, cool. it's a real decision. It's a real decision as a anchor to the staff. Mm -hmm. 
there's so much to dive into with Sonny. He freaking, he, he'd be like, man, you know what? Sometimes I know you called Cutter, but I think I'm just going to throw a sinker. Voter was like, Stephen votes like, what? He's like, no, you're throwing 97. I can't just catch it if you just change. He's like, sometimes I just feel, I just feel it in the glove and I'm about to throw it. And he just changes it like that? And he just changes it. Voter's like, I'm thinking Cutter. And he's like, his receiving numbers were like the worst for like <laughs> that two year span that he was catching him. It was hilarious. And, he was, and Sonny would just be like, yeah, you're right, but I got a lot of outs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, he was great. Uh, he was great. Yeah, way. he was great. Good guy. I told there. him. I told you. I told you guys. I told him he was like the number one guy, and he's like, I think that's because I don't put myself out there. But when I do, people are like, "Damn, that dude's funny." And I'm like, "Yeah, you were great." He's funny and he's honest too. Like, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes people can't see past the accent, and they're like, "Oh, well, he's just a, he is, he is smart. He is mm-hmm. definitely hilarious." I loved how he was like. I think that's a compliment. I think that's not a compliment. I appreciate that compliment. <laughs> so when he went to put in his earpiece, he couldn't hear. And then we had just had Derek Gould on. And unfortunately, we didn't have time to switch the earpieces. And he's like, damn, that dude needs to clean his ears. And Derek's standing like right here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the honest said. part. <laughs> that's what he said. That's, when he, that's why part. he's like, man, y'all need some better earpieces. Because literally, it was like just covered in like, I mean, it, listen, he, it was a bunch of people that had used it, obviously. But Derek just happened to be standing here. And then he's like, and then so, so he's like, you, after he got out there, he's like, you know, I had to bust on you. I'm like, oh man, we're all for it. Like, this is what the show's about. Like, yeah, bust on us. And I said, I said, it's oh. okay. I went, I, I said, Sonny, it's okay. I go, I, I took you deep once. And he's like, you did? You got me? I was like, 2014 Red Sox. He's like, damn, I was good in 2014 too. And I was like, yeah, good. <laughs> Yeah, if, if, if there's like a cardinal's ear infection that runs around, we're so screwed. That's not how ear infections Claudia. happen. I know. Claudia. Claudia's fault. Claudia should have an alcohol. Always blame your producer. (laughs) All right, I got official numbers for you. You want them on Brian Bayo? Yeah, over. Contract done. Over, I didn't even say a number. (laughs) Over what it was. Over what was reported. It's a six year, $55 million extension. There is a club option in the seventh season for $21 million. So you buy out some free agent time. That's the key here, right? You're trying to get as much as you can out of a pitcher that you think has a higher ceiling than what he's already shown you, right? And I think last year, even probably a solid three, three. Is it three? Is it the three? Red Sox might. He think made his he starts. Could be a two. He made his starts. So, um, thoughts on the deal? I, I mean, I, I I remember I reading at one point, AJ, that. You know, that you look at comps like Spencer Strider. I don't think – I think he probably actually was in around the same range. I, I can actually time. bring this up in terms of service time. Strider came up as a reliever. And then so the service time was around the same. The difference is his uh, – I think his innings were higher. Oh, yeah, much they higher. Is, 214 and a third. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is when these extensions were signed. So Strider was at 134 innings. But Strider had already posted a better numbers. I mean, a 269 ERA, a 153 OPS plus at the time. Right so now. he had actually significantly better numbers, looking like a one there. And Strider got about $75 million over, I think, seven years. Also, yeah. do the math here. If we add that club option year... Where are we at? 55 plus 21 87? is 76. So you're almost exactly at the Strider number, aren't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure Strider has has some type of number on the end of that too, like an option. Yeah, I'll, I'll find Strider's deal while we're chatting. Good, Six good, years, $75 million with an option. What's up, AJ? Good first contract for Brian Bayo, for Mr. Bayo, oh. and his family. I mean, dude. Six years, fifty-five million. That's pretty nice to start out with. It. What is he? Twenty? What do we say? Twenty-four about to turn twenty-five, or mm-hmm. twenty-three about to turn twenty-four. That's that's a pretty good number to start your career with. Is fifty-five million in the back pocket? Like, thank you. I met him when he was twenty-one when I worked for the Red Sox in the minor leagues, and just how he went about his business, he was always like he just had his eyes open, and was ready to listen, and ready to learn, and like he would go. This was in Double A. He would go and watch. 
the other starters in on the double A team, guys that were not even close to his caliber, do their bullpen. So the kudos to the Red Sox organization, minor league system for building this guy up and kudos to him for, you know, the person that he is. He's very, just very engaging, very, just always seems really happy. And I would, I would bet on him too. So Alex Spear, who. Been waiting for you all day, Paul. For EEI, I'll give you this while they get ready. I'm sure there's someone coming back to join us. The Lance. The big man. The big man. So Alex Spear said talks had centered around Hunter Green's deal with the Reds which was six years, 53, with a 21 mil option. Looks like Bale will get slightly more than that. So there you go. There was your comp. And a lot we had, more innings. We right. had that on there, too. Who had a lot more innings? Bale? Bale. Really? Oh, then Green at the time? Then Green at the time. But Green was Green was hurt a little early. Yeah. He's – and Green ceiling everybody. You know, you've seen the 100 Should be plus. higher. Should be higher, but innings matter. And if you're going to throw a lot of innings – Having some having some insurance that you're not gonna you're not gonna blow out is super helpful. Mm-hmm. And the number one problem with the Red Sox roster right now is pitching talent. Hmm. Keep him as a three. Maybe he develops into a two. Put somebody around him so he doesn't feel like he needs to be a one. Mm-hmm. I think that's where you can get into the walk range. I think that's where you can get into. Issues of trying to be somebody that you're not. Okay, I got to strike out the world. I need to do this. Like you can't have, you can't have thirteen of your last fourteen starts with a walk. Yeah, and my thing is playoff starter or not playoff starter. There's a separation there too. And for me, playoff starter. Yep. All right, let's go back to lovely Jupiter, Florida. Bring in our next guest, Lance Lynn, joining us on FT Live. Lance, does it feel weird to finally be talking to AJ in person versus on a screen all year? Yeah. Uh, the fact that he has to be here in person and can't hide behind some of the shit he says is going to be good. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. You know, uh-huh. There, see, you are, you know what, there you he are, is. Yeah, 100% going to. You are so lucky that I that – I'm the surprised you didn't key it. No, you're lucky that the clubhouse is closed in the place because I was going to take your keys and take it for a spin. It's in, they're in there always. Are they? It's for, for anyone to try. drive. Damn it, because I was just going to take it and move it. Because, of course, he has, like, the first spot. I was just going to take it and move it so he had to walk. But he has. you have to go in to go to the game. Right. So now that I know the keys are in it. Yeah, I'll probably have to get those now. <laughs> he is in trouble now. Can you That's give us the backstory? Yeah. So uh, one of my daughters is here uh, right now. She just pulled up after school. But uh, we ordered the, uh, the Raptor Bronco a couple years ago. Just got in last year. And then I got traded to L.A. And then uh, the Barbie mover came out sometime during the year last year or whatever. And the girls were like, man, that'd be cool to have a pink Bronco. Obviously, I said no. Um, by the time we got back from L.A. in the season, it was pink. That's pretty much the story. So I have no pool in my house is what we got out of there. Was there, <laughs> was, was there an argument? <laughs> was, was there, there an, argument? an argument when that happened? Or were you just like, no, wow? There's no, you know what? You just accept it at that point. You're like. Yeah, everybody loves it. This is going to be great. And then it just so happens my five year old wants to be taken to school on it every day. Um, so what you know? Hey, what car you want to drive? We're driving the pink Bronco, so I'm going to ask anymore. What? But so my question is, you're cool like, now. Yeah, but yeah. What, what are you going to do? Paint it back at that point? I mean, there's it's, nothing. So it's wrapped. So all you have to just pull oh, it it's off. just a wrap. Yeah. Oh, what and if he came, what, if, yeah. what if he came back out of the game and it was back to the half, was it blue? Half blue, half pink. Oh, my diamond would be so happy. With She'd me. be upset. Yes, more so. Than, <laughs> yes. You'd have to deal with the daughters and not. What want, if I told her you don't what, want that smoke? You what if, what if we told her we're like, listen, <laughs> we're doing cool things with daddy. He said he wanted you to help me. Yeah, and just like take like stripes out of it. There's a good chance she might punch you and say, no, don't touch my pink bronze. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got to watch that one. So she's basically, got, she's Lance Lynn on the mound after a strikeout. I was just going to say that. She is her father's daughter. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. She's starting to say bad words. I'm like, man, I got to get her to stop watching games. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you I have to pitch well, on the road. Gonna, gonna, yeah, road night games. Yeah, yeah. You love it. But do you have great pants? I thought, you know, yeah. I thought Ollie would, you know. Well, when we first got the spring training here, I guess that's all we've had is great pants, so. Here, and that's oh. all we get. We had a little, little uniform issues. Not all the white pants showed up. So I was like, you know what, gray for the, you know, I'm the new guy on the staff. 
Uh, so I'll take some night road games for sure. You're the new Wainwright. I don't know about that. No. <laughs> You're the new leader of the staff. You're the new Wainwright. So yeah, so Wainwright, we, Wayno would volunteer to go on the road. Right. right? So that's it's you selfless. now. That's a selfless. So and we're, not even we're, pitch. We're big into that. Yeah, there's nothing Teamers like a night road game. Teammates on. Yeah, you're late tomorrow getting in, and the next day you can show up late too. So I was like, I'm all for this. You were late today, speaking of I was late. right on time. The, the meeting started at 8.30. Lance was not here at 8.30. Those are optional. The Player Association, no, you were here because you wanted your check. That was in my locker. I didn't even have to be oh. there for it. I got this thing figured out. <laughs> they don't have direct deposit. I have this thing figured out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, are, are you glad that, that you have the gray pants? And not the transparent ones. Yeah, these these white ones are interesting. Um, uh, the whole uniform thing, you know, I always say you're just happy to have one, right? The old uh, politically correct answer. But they've been a they've been a little bit uh, shaky so far. But I think that they're starting to figure them out. Uh, they say they say that they've got it. We'll see if we have everything by opening day. But I have nothing to complain about. But I don't have to really play. So that's where I'm at so far. Are you a Nike guy? Is that why you're saying that? I am the furthest thing from no, he's a, Nike a new guy. balance guy. Yeah. So um, my my uh, my cut and my fit are not what they've been for the last thirteen years. So somewhere it got messed up, but that's not for me to figure out. That's for them to figure out. And they say they'll have it by opening day. So Top or like pants or worse. All of it. They're all, all they're all not the right cut. And I'm ninety percent of guys have the same same issue. So it just comes with the territory sometimes. That's a good attitude. Got to grind. Yeah. Sometimes you got to grind. You know, you could have signed the biggest with the Yankees shit answer I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> that is the biggest crock of shit answer. Because, yeah. listen, he wants to be like, these things suck. I need a new uniform. <laughs> these are too small, I, too big. I told him that if they have them by opening day, we're good. Are you uh, are you slated now? Because last time I think we talked to you, you said you had game three. I don't I still don't know what the, uh, what the uh, schedule looks like. I get my first spring game tomorrow. So That's I'm gonna take it. One? I'm gonna take that one. I mean, one inning, four. You're going four. four first yeah, time out. I went three to four the other day on the backfield. Oh, is it yeah. true? Because we just had Sonny here. Is it true that you were sitting at home with a voodoo doll and you stabbed him in the hamstring so you could be the opening day starter? No, I would put more <laughs> miles in that category than me because he's. I don't know what he's up to. He's got mustache going on. He's into. He's into like having his own, making his own bread and, and just kind of weird stuff. So I would put him in that category to me. But then again, he'd also tell you that, hey, that opening day, somebody else can have it too. So we'll have to wait and see what uh, Ollie decides to do. Hopefully Sonny's good to go. Own, yeah. That's he makes his own bread? That's what I hear. Um, you know, he he's a uh, he's a beautiful mind. You know, if you could uh, if you could ever have one in a game, he's, he's a different thinker. It's been fun to uh, get to know him this spring. Is he taking you on Jupiter? Is he taking you? I mean, he's, he's got from boats. Jupiter. He's got boats and all kinds of stuff. We're all waiting for the, you know, the going fishing and stuff like that. He talks about how great of a fisherman he is and all that stuff, but nobody's gotten an invite anywhere. Not one guy. Yeah, but he talks of, like he really? is super into that. So we'll wait and see. If he that said he actually... had boats when we had him on. Yeah, no one's seen these boats really? or been on them. Is he so... a good golfer? Does he take a golf? He says here? he golfs too. Have yet to get invited by that. So it's like that guy that does everything, has everything, but you never see him do anything. Yeah. Or take anybody What's anywhere. Of that, I think you know some some people are just in, enjoy saying and telling you about the things that they have, and then are selfish. You know, maybe Miles is just a selfish person and likes to brag. I'm just trying to figure that out. <laughs> hey, speaking of bragging, <laughs> speaking of bragging, that. Diamond Diamond put out a Instagram post about how you're leaving for spring training. You're leaving, and it's it's all about, like, you're going to get tan. You're going to golf. You're going to do all this stuff, and <laughs> she's here taking care of kids. But, if you had if you had Instagram, if you had Twitter, what would be your clap back to that? Because nobody can actually do anything on Twitter, so if it happens on Instagram or anything, they can't actually do anything to you. Uh, you know, be like the old, uh, was it Billy Madison when uh, Will or what's his name, uh, when he said, that is correct. When he takes his shirt off, uh, uh, yes. spelling contest, really or whatever, I think that that's what I would have came correct. back. That is correct. The blob. We do yeah, enjoy. The blob from- we you, we all have been there. We enjoy getting to spring training because we miss competing. We miss you know, you know, 
giving each other a hard time in the clubhouse and all those fun things. So, you know, she is correct. We enjoy that. It's like you finally get to go back to work. So uh, she's, she is correct. That is correct. So now that you're back in Jupiter, you're back at work, we keep having this conversation. Everybody's in the best shape of their life. Right. So have you mixed in salads to make sure you're in the best shape of your life? Um, I'm <laughs> Instead of salads, I'm mixing in intermittent fasting. Oh. Yeah. So, so you in go the like morning, two hours. Some, yeah. In the morning, it's just some coffee. And then I wait till brunch. Oh. Yeah. Brunch. Brunch, brunch is Not favorite. breakfast. Brunch, by the yeah. way. You just brunch. brunch up and breakfast back. What do you have for brunch? You have like Eggs Benny? I would say that my go... Who, that's a tough one. We had it the other day, man. We got you can go shrimp and grits. Uh, you got uh, you know fried chicken and waffles. You can't go wrong with either one of those. Is that for, here? Yeah, they have that here. We had brunch the other day. It was great. It was all my favorites. Yeah. Why, why was I not here that day? Me. I love all that stuff. Yeah. Well, we knew you were coming, so we went pizza today because well, I like pizza too. Yeah, now. exactly. No one doesn't like pizza. If you don't like pizza, AJ. I don't really care to hang out with you. <laughs> Pizza and beer. <laughs> I can picture that. Give, brunch time in Jupiter. Brunch, brunch yeah. time at Field Three. Yep. All right. Over. Yeah, the over white tablecloth. How many? Over under on how many boxes AJ's taken up to go food after today, from from uh, Cardinals in, camp. If he could get into the place, how many? With what I saw in there today, I could tell you that I could see him walking out with three boxes, some wings for sure, and some pizza. That's two of the three boxes. And then there was, um, ooh, what was the other thing in there that I feel like? Those two for sure. He might even have two boxes of wings, knowing him. Both good choices. Some ranch, or is he a blue cheese guy? Both. Both. I'm a bother. Dip in both. both. Oh no, just go one He's ranch, one blue cheese. Oh, at the same time. No. no. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> hey, listen, I have lunch plans. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with zero. I have, okay. I have lunch plans. Hey, I've got one base. Lance question. isn't invited to. Perfect. I gotta watch the game. <laughs> Lance, um, how's Wilson Contreras? So I, I don't know if you followed that story last year, but you know he kind of had a roller coaster where initially they kind of took him off. We talked to. You know, the team about a little Ali was was covering it and said he was a great sport about it. But uh, I, I know you've added a little bit to the to the repertoire these days. So you can't just go to him and be like, listen, dude, it's fastball every time. But how is it working with him so far? Hold on. I missed the first part of that. Wilson. We, we'll see. Um, I well just had him in some bullpen so far, um, but just talking to him, the way he's trying to connect and making sure that he knows what your mindsets are and things like that in different you know counts hitters uh situations and games has been great um i know him playing from across the field the guy cares the guy wants to win and whenever you're in the first season after taking over after yachty there's it's not going to be a tr smooth transition and it's his first year in a new organization and new everything it's like give the guy a break the guy wants to win the guy cares and the guy plays hard and he's doing everything he can to make sure that that's all that matters to him okay you're back with the cardinals okay Matt Carpenter is back with the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Who was more welcome back? And why are people saying that Matt Carpenter is the leader of this team? Because when I played with him, he was like, not. He was like, Carp, shut up. Go sit in the corner. Right. Okay. <laughs> he was kind of that guy. Was, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think that you look at uh, we're both welcome back with, with open arms um, by different groups. Uh, we, uh, we both see things differently than each other, but we also get along and uh, think very highly of each other. And that's the beauty of a clubhouse, as we all know. you got to have guys that have different skits, different things, and different ways to do things so you can kind of bring the group together. Uh, him and I have known each other for a long time, so we're going to know how to you know pull at each other, not only give each other a hard time, but able to bring other people in. And then, uh, you know, obviously on, on his side of, of the ball, um, you know, he's a guy that's got to you know, help these young guys take the next step. Um, you know, we talk about all the older guys we brought in. You know, we're brought in to help the next generation take the step to be great players. You look at on on his side, you got Newt, you got uh, DC, you got Walk. All those guys are trying to become superstars, and they have the ability. And Carp's seen some things and, and, and put up some numbers in this game that can help that way. And also take some uh, time off of Goldie and Nato's plate so they can actually just go play the game, too. So it's going to be a good mix, and we have the same thing on the pitching side. So we're looking forward to it. Do you, um, we were just talking about Carp and you coming back here. Now you have Descalso, a former mm -hmm. teammate. Has he made you run yet? Has he made you do extra work yet? And have you told him to fuck off yet? 
I've done the third thing for sure. Uh, <laughs> he, we, 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 we've joked about the running and doing some extra things. Um, but he's done a great job with the schedule. Um, I cannot complain of, you know, it puts me in a really good group that doesn't shag or anything like that. So, so far, you know, he's, he's in a good spot with me. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So it's a long year for a bench coach. If, I, if you, if you told start me he learned how to use a computer. Finally, yeah. If you start nice. poking at the wrong people, bench coaching gets tough. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really good advice for a bench coach. Don't poke at the wrong people. Uh, that would be great advice it's for when AJ becomes four a bench five coach. Days to do nothing but give them a hard time. <laughs> well, we appreciate the time, dude. Good to see you in person. Give AJ plenty of shit on your way out. Um, don't give him any food. And we'll talk to you during the year, man. Yeah, we'll get some, some wings. Chomp on some wings real quick. No, I'm going. I got to go. I'm going to golf. Where are you course. golfing? I'm not going to golf. I'm going to a golf course at lunch. Oh, nice. Good for you. No, you're not invited, though. Know, well, you I'm could good. be invited, but you have a game to go to. I got a game. AJ has been talking about this all week, week wanting to hang out with you. He keeps saying no. Oh, I got kids. Here. It's like, hey, who goes to spring training and has four kids and goes and hangs out with someone? Not someone who likes to be married. That's cool people. Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for his wife. It's like, that's, you know, it's like, hey, you got multiple kids at the house, so I'm going to be gone all day. Jeez. My kids are 18 and 17, bro. They're, 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 they're on their at this own. Point, they're they're so not hanging sufficient. out with you anyways. Trust me. Yeah. Uber Eats, my bill for Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that is off the – because my – like, like yeah, this weekend I was card. in – I was, I was in – oh, of course. I was in Boston this weekend. One day you'll get there. Like, <laughs> no, where you're gone and your kids are at home. My son stayed home by himself, and he yeah. ordered Einstein's for breakfast. I love that. We live a mile from Einstein's. No. He has a car. Get in the car, save the delivery fee, and he go pick it up. Saved gas money, though, in his mind. Save mileage on the car, so resale value. There's multiple no. ways that he could mm -mm. be thinking about this, too. you got to see how his brain works. Just get out of bed, drive the mile, pick it up, come back. <laughs> a, you know, he gets two bagels at Einstein's at $77. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it's $50 uh, delivery fee. Just drive. And we wonder why our kids can't order their own food or talk to people in the face anymore. There we know. Social media is ruining the world. There it is. But here we are. This. It's this. <laughs> That's not Austin's issue. He's good. Yeah, he is good. He's a great kid. He actually well, Lance, good to see you, dude. Well, Have fun in that day one start tomorrow, right? Thanks, guys. There we go. Oh, it's good to see wow. this guy. He was great yeah, at putting I down love that. just because he didn't want to block anything. True. <laughs> <laughs> Epic. <laughs> Thank you, Lance. And good stuff. Little, 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 and then he would he would he would, he would yep, do see? it. See? Got it down. <laughs> he block it. Oh, you guys have a good one. You too. You too. Uh, I wish we could. I wish we could mic them up for that. I wish we could go back in time and mic up a start with Lance Lynn and AJ Przinsky. I bet it'll be way more intense than you would think. Oh, obviously it would. Like be we intense. joke about it yeah. here, and you see how you see. What about how a they spring are? training start? Oh man. Well, you couldn't mic it up because it's on the backfield. Neither one of those guys are getting in a gray uni back in the day. True, but true. No, it would be it would be intense. That's for sure. All right, let's get to slap hands. I agree, Ali Shiva. Lance Lynn is cool. He he is cool. He, is he even so cool. He, he knows the modern terminology too. Like. He's not just going, oh, my my daughter's a badass like me. He goes, you don't, you don't want, that, want that smoke? You don't want that smoke? I don't know. You, you, stay, you stay hip on things no matter your age when you're in the clubhouse. Mm -hmm. When you're in the clubhouse or you coach high school sports, you stay hip. I love this comment about the fact that he didn't. <laughs> he's like, I don't really want to hang out with somebody who doesn't like pizza. Like, everybody likes pizza. Yes, you get different toppings, but I don't really want to hang out with you if you don't like pizza. All of the uh, vegans or gluten-free people out there. They still have vegan well, you can have your options. Pizzas. You're right. You're right. 100%. I, I actually am obsessed with those options. So I'll take that. Um, we can still hang out. Here's my thing for slap hands. Thank you. We mentioned this earlier, and I made sure that I backed it up. Matt Holiday did indeed have a no-trade clause for one team. Oakland A's. One team at one point, right? So I was looking at the story here from USA Today. Is this Bob? Is it Bob? Did he write it? No. Oh, it was Ted Berg. Um, and it was back in 2016. 
Okay, said, so it was 16. There's not a lot about Matt Holiday's free agent deal with the Yankees that seems terribly surprising. Okay? Make 13 mil, one season, blah, blah, blah. But wait, there's also this, and it was Chris Catello back then, who probably was in high school so back he then. Was, I was going to say. Breaking stories like a G. He said, interesting wrinkle in Matt Holiday's deal with the Yankees. The contract allows him to block trades to one team. The Oakland A's. He he has him and his wife essentially said, "We are not going back there." Yeah, he played a half a season there in two thousand nine, and then he was traded to the it was, Cardinals. It was, a, it was enough of a time for him, for them to say, "No, don't need it." And was was John Fisher in charge at the time? Or was he after that? I think he had already owned the team by then. That would be a Google search. Matt Holliday made the right decision. What'd you say? I think Matt Holiday made the right decision. To have a no trade clause to go to Oakland? No. No, by going to St. Louis. Oh. Yes, that worked out well for him. And I believe that he had the team before that so yeah that would make sense not wanting to deal with someone that runs that org if only every player did that there would be no players left until they had to move on Oakland ownership was, yeah they, they would keep taking minor leaguers i wouldn't have enough gumption to say if the if the a's called and said hey you're gonna go up to the big leagues because we can't find anybody else i'd be like i'm your huckleberry yeah someone someone would pop up yep. um uh, some injury updates on the way out here. Uh, Craig Council saying Nick Madrigal has a mild right hammy strain. And Caleb Killian, who's a big deal pitcher in the system, strained Terry Smajor. Mm. Likely not in games until around the All-Star break. So just a, just a little injury update note. I mean, this is the time of year you're going to get a lot of that in spring training, you know? This and this is the time to make sure, like Sonny said earlier in the show, make sure it doesn't get worse. Agreed. Agreed. The I mean, Killian's had his ups and downs. I'll I'll be fair. The the big big prospect that we're hoping at some point comes up for the Cubs this year that they're very excited about is Cade Horton. So we'll see what happens. Killian was a stud when I saw him in the fall league a few years ago, but you know, he's he's had some ups and downs. Uh, Horton is like a top. 30 overall prospect in the sport by most publications. Horton, here's a who. But we'll see. Um, all right, AJ, good stuff, dude. This is a solid yeah, day. Sorry, no, people, were asking, people were asking. I, New, Newpar and uh, Arenado were both agreed to come on, but then it rained, so it messed up their BP. Their BP time got messed up. So, you know, mm. sorry about that. But I had talked to them both. They both had said they'd come on. So, next time. It's not okay. your fault. It's your state's beautiful weather fault. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sorry, Sonny Gray, Lance Lynn, John Mosellock, Ollie Marmel, you did Matt Carpenter. You, you did awesome. I'm just saying your state sucks. That's rude. It's terrible. He, he's. I've been driving to, to Studio Kratz every day. <laughs> it's been brutal. Yeah. It, it's... It's, it's like so a bad nasty. movie. It's like you know what it reminds me of. It's like one of those movies where someone you know gets broken up with and they're having the worst day. They <laughs> slip, they fall, whatever. And then if they went in the car and started driving, that's what the weather's like the whole time. It's just it's just sorrow. <laughs> driving through puddles the whole time. I'm driving. I'm just contemplating like what is life. Uh, what do you got to finish here on your head? Well, Iron Pig's alt hat. It's a Liberty Bell. It's a Liberty Bell That's hanging cool. from, link, hanging from the iron beam. It's really, it's fiery. What's that? See that part's underrated. It almost pigtail. Underneath. Is that the, a pigtail? It's a pigtail. Oh, that's crafty. Pigtail right underneath there. Instead of the bell, the bell doesn't ring. It's cracked. But. See, that's the intricacy. That you expect from you the get. Iron Pigs. You, so you, I like the, the baby blue color. I was always into that color. AJ, grade? I like that one. I thought it was a Phillies hat, though, because it looked like a Liberty Bell, obviously the Iron Pigs. But 
I, I also have a huge glare, as you can tell. The sun is behind me, so there's a glare. And it's. Uh, but thank you, by the way. Thank you to the Cardinals for letting us use their tent today, because otherwise it would have been a no-go from Cardinal camp. <laughs> That's pro. That is pro. That's pro. Thank you to the Cardinals. Great yes. job there. And on our way out, guest list for tomorrow is already blocked in. Fire. Josh Donaldson with a special guest appearance by AJ Przinsky on a Friday for that conversation. Bailey Ober will join us, Minnesota Twins, super, super tall dude, so he's going to have to tilt the camera. And then Alex Anthopoulos running the Atlanta Braves and signing himself to a massive contract extension. No, the, the ownership group did that for him, but we'll congratulate him and we'll talk to him about the 2024 Atlanta Braves. Maybe Ken Rosenthal appearing on the show tomorrow as well. So again, so thanks to the man. teams. Yes, he is a very busy man um, that were so gracious with us this week and we'll have more spring training camp tour action next week. AJ, good By stuff. The way, before, before, yeah, Mike, Mike, Michael Harris, who's been on the show, happy birthday, but also more importantly, happy birthday to Joe Carter, makes the best pecan pie in the world. So Joe, hopefully see you in Dallas soon with a pie for me. You're his pitch man. I need some of these pies. Yeah. I love pie. Joe and love Fred, pie. oh man, they make such a great pie. And I'll take your fish if you like fishing. Hey, listen, if, if Lance was talking about Miles Michaelis not taking you fishing, Joe and his brother Fred, they'll take you fishing. You'll catch all the crappie you ever wanted. I can't wait. I can't wait. Some pie and some crappie. Still waiting for the invite. Yep. We'll see you tomorrow.